Hello everybody and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. This is How to Train a Speedrunner and today we have a great show for you. Before we get into it, just a quick reminder. We are looking for new hotfix shows and showrunners. And so you can use exclamation hotfix in Twitch chat or you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix to submit your ideas. This includes bi-weekly shows, limited showruns like Ocarina Improv and one day events. Submissions made before June 13th will be considered for these open show slots. And also, if you missed out on SGDQ 2023, you'd be sure to go check out the VODs on YouTube right now. YouTube.com slash Games Done Quick. Some of them are up right now, and the others were going to be coming out over the next few days. With all that said, uh, I will hand it over to our runner. I'll let him introduce uh, the game and himself. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, everybody. My name is Death Control, and I am here to show you Kaze and the Wild Masks. That is the official name for the game. However, I like to call it K's in the Wild Masks. If you're a Kazer in chat, let me know. What do you guys think? Is it K's? Is it Kaze? One for K's, two for Kaze? Let me know. I'm, I'm not going to lie. The only reason I didn't introduce the game because I wasn't sure which one it was. <laughs> it is officially Kaze. It, it is officially Kaze, but I like to call it K's. And All you know right. what? I, I call it what I want. So, uh, so deal with it. You know, um, I, 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 I'm on board with you. Excellent, excellent. So it's going to be K's today. Anyways, um, this is an indie platforming game. came out in 2021. It's made by a Brazilian studio. Um, and the first thing that you need to know about this game, if anyone ever talks about this game, is this is a direct tribute to Donkey Kong Country. In the same way that Pizza Tower is Wario Land 5, uh, this is Donkey Kong Country 4. Um, so if you're familiar with the Donkey Kong Country games, like the classics on the Super Nintendo, you're going to recognize what's going on right away. Um, and, uh, the other thing, I want to do another poll with you guys. It uh, looks like everybody's against me. It's going to be Kaze, huh? All right. Uh, I have one more poll for you guys because I don't expect very many people have played this, so I want to know if you guys have played this or not. So here's the poll. So if you've picked up the game and played it at all, give me a one in chat. If you beat the game 100%, so that's all the collectibles, give me a two. And if you went on to get all of the achievements, all of the time trials and the no-hit medals, so you did everything, give me a three in chat. I don't expect many people have played this. So uh, what I'm gonna be showing you today, the tutorial we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna be going into uh, a lot of things that hopefully will make sense if you've never seen the game before. Um, but I'm just interested to know if anybody's out there who's, uh, who's played it. So uh, I think I'm ready to jump in and what I want to do to start, I'm just going to play on my main file here. It's like my practice file and my ILs file. I'm going to jump in and just kind of show off the game, just do a little bit, talk about some of the basic movement um, and uh, just kind of do like an immersive uh, uh, showcase, I suppose, so you can just see it. Um, and then we will start jumping into some of the uh, info. Four never heard of this game before. I like it. All right, great. Let's jump into the first level. Let's just play it. So here we go. So this is 1-1. One, one. The first thing you're going to see us doing a lot is we're going to be doing a lot of spinning. So like I said, it's basically a Donkey Kong Country clone, and spinning is your role. It is the fastest way to travel. It is an attack. When you hit enemies, you uh, go faster. And um, you can uh, jump out of a spin mid-air. We'll be talking more about that later. Um, our next kind of basic move is this float. Floating just makes you slow fall. Um, and it basically just gives you a bunch of control over your jump height, so it's really useful, should be used a lot. It's a great move. And our third move is uh, the Air Smash, or I like to call it the Ground Pound. It's a very multifunctional move. We're going to use it right here at the end of the level just to get up to that platform, and that's the end of 1-1. One, one. All done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into 1-2, show you the next level, and we'll just talk about a few other kind of basic movement mechanics in this game. Uh, so 1-1, one, 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 of course, is sort of a tutorial level. It's pretty basic, um, and it's just kind of a playground to experiment with the moves. 1-2 is a little bit harder. First thing that's going to happen, we're going to grab this heart. We're going to have this little red dude following us. His name is Hogo, and Hogo is basically our HP. Hogo will protect us from a hit. If we get hit once, Hogo goes away. If we get hit again, uh, we are dead. We have to go back to the last checkpoint or the start of the level. Um, other than that, what you're going to see in the second level is just some new mechanics. We have these springs that bounce you up. Um, you can... Uh, high bounce off of them. You can spin into them and get bounced up. Um, we got some new enemies like the eggplants. And um, the level's a little bit longer. It's uh, more challenging. There's more uh, pits, um, things like that. 
Uh, we are going to have another opportunity to use the ground pound right here to get up on this platform. Um, we're going to slide down the slope, and right up here, there's going to be a couple of these spiky dudes in our way. We're just going to go ahead and take damage and plow right through. Um, and then right here, we're supposed to go down that slope, but we can just skip that whole section and fly across, bounce off that, and uh, we're out of the level. So uh, we had, right at the end of the level, there's a damage boost, and there's like a shortcut, and there's a lot of spots in this game where there's sort of like intended platforming mechanics, but you can get past them by either taking damage or by just like doing skips. And it's kind of like some of the great lore of this game of like what things are developer intended and what are not. Both of those situations I think are developer intended, but I don't really know entirely. So y'all can tell me what you think. What I want to do is I'm going to jump back into 1-1. I'm going to run it again. And this time we're going to do a 100% run. So this time I'm going to get all the collectibles so I can show you what the collectibles are. The first thing you're going to see is picking up is these little purple crystals right here. I call these red gems. Um, I know that they're not red, but for our purposes, uh, red is good enough. It's an easier word to say than purple. So you know what? I just call them red gems. I <laughs> forgot I'm doing a 100% run. So let's pick up all the darn red gems. Um, let's grab them. So those, that's the first collectible. Uh, second one is going to be the K's letters. Um, there are four of those, uh, K, A, Z, and E, obviously. Um, and then the third collectible that we need is going to be uh, right up here. There are these little bonus stages. There's two of these in every level. If you complete them both, you get a green crystal. Uh, so in this bonus stage, this is the first one in the game. It's pretty basic. You just collect all of the little green cr uh, crystals right here. You collect the mini crystals. We can again ground pound to get up. And uh, there we go. Just like that, we're out of it. Just keep moving through the level. We're going to keep collecting the red gems. So in every level we need, whoops, in every level we need uh, 100 of these guys. Um, the red gems unlock the true ending for the game. So um, if you get all of the red gems in all the levels, it gives you true ending. The cave letters, uh, each level, if you get all the cave letters, it unlocks like a little story panel. Um, it's these really nice um, images that kind of explain the story. So when you get them all, you get like sort of a slideshow um, explaining the lore of the game. Um, this is our uh, second bonus. Now I got both of the bonuses. And if you get all of the green crystals in a world, it unlocks a bonus level for that world. Um, and the bonus levels have some kind of silly gimmicks to them. But anyways, as you can see, we're having exactly 100 uh, red red gems, and we are out of the level with all the collectibles. So that's kind of what the 100% route looks like. We're going to be doing a 100% run uh, later on uh, in the show, but um, just kind of showing you some things about the collectibles. And now I'm going to do the same thing for 1-2. We're just going to run 100% on this, and I'll show you that it kind of makes the route a little bit more complicated. So... One question that you might ask, because if you noticed, I ended the last level with exactly 100 red gems. The question is, how many red gems are in the level? And the answer to that is for most levels, it is 102 to 105. So they do not give you a lot of leeway to miss them. However, any time that you have your HP and you pick up a heart, the heart doesn't give you more health. Instead, it gives you five bonus gems. That's really useful because every level has two to four hearts. And that means that we can pick up those hearts as long as we're not taking damage. We can pick up those hearts and use them to route out red gems from the level. So I can specifically plan which ones I want to skip. So, so far I've been picking up all the red gems right here. I'm going to try and pick up all of these here, but two. And missing four of them is okay. Ideally, I want to miss only two, but four is okay. It's got to be between two and four. And that will be relevant pretty soon. Again, we don't want to miss any of the gems here, and I don't want to take damage. Uh, we're going to grab the le uh, letter over there. We're going to grab this bonus heart for five gems. And the second bonus is coming up, and this bonus, um, the green crystals are going to look like they're spawning in randomly. What's really interesting with this game is that there's actually no randomness. I'm going to put a small asterisk on that, which I'll explain later, but there's essentially no randomness in this game. So when you first play this bonus, it's a bit chaotic. You have to figure out where the uh, gems are and kind of react to them. Um, but when you're uh, speedrunning it, you can just memorize the route because they're in the same place every time. No RNG manips. It's just zero randomness at all. Yo, what's up, Calame? Thanks for the GL. So this is why I closely um, counted my gems. Um, because uh, now I can skip all those gems down there. I have exactly 100, and that's all I need. And that is the 100% route for 1-2. So, the next thing I want to mention is just talk about the routes. And every level has really, like, at least three different routes in it. So there's the 100% route. That one's self-explanatory. Again, don't want to take damage for the most part. And also, we got to pick up all the collectibles. 
Then the other type of route is like the any percent route, which uh, is you can take as much damage as you have hearts for, and damage boosting is very useful in this game. There's gonna be a lot of damage boosting that you'll see as we go through some of the other strats. Finally, there's one more sort of route through a level, which I'll show you real quick in one one. So I've already done this level twice. I'm gonna do it one more time. That clock right there is the time trial and we use the time trial to time IL runs. But, so we have to optimize the clock pick up. I do that with a little ground pound, just like that. And when we pick up the clock, you can see all of the items in the level are gone. And that means that we only have uh, like one health when we're doing a time trial run. And so that means that um, we need to pretty much find like the optimal place to uh, damage boost uh, in every level and to optimize the aisles. And honestly, all but I think five aisles in this game include an intentional damage boost somewhere. So like I said, it's very useful. So let's get out of here. Let's see if, uh, ideally I'd want a 32 here. Nah, I just barely missed a 32. Um, but anyway, so that's that's the aisle. So those are all the different ways that you can pretty much uh, run the level. So with that out of the way, um, let's start talking about like the movement mechanics. So I'll show you uh, sort of some of the different mechanics here. So. Um, the first thing I want to say is I just want to make a real quick disclaimer. We don't have any task tools for this game. I don't personally have any like analysis tools. So any type of like frame data or if I say a certain type of movement is faster, it's always got like uh, the attachment of to the best of my knowledge. Um, I don't know like everything perfectly. I could be proven wrong. And surprisingly often I find out something that I didn't know in a level. So I'm going to tell you things to the best of my knowledge but there might be something that turns out to be wrong and i just want to point this out in one one there's actually 10 stack of gems back here but like i said about the routing i have to skip this one because this level has 105 gems two hearts the first heart we need for hogo the second one is a backup five gems so that 10 is the one that i get to route out um in the hundred percent all right so anyways let's talk about the movement so the first thing i want to talk about is uh the first thing I want to talk about is button configs. Let's talk about uh, binding and buttons. So you can rebind your controls. This is a two button game. You have your up, down, left, right, and then your main two buttons are jump and attack. So I like to call these A and B. Jump button is A, attack is B, just like a NES controller or like a Game Boy controller. That's just how I refer to it. So you know what I'm saying? If I say press A or press B, I'm talking about jump and attack. One thing that's really relevant in this menu, oh, and of course you can play this game on a controller. I mean, it's from 2021, come on, it's a modern game. You can play on a controller. Um, you can play with arrow keys, you know, you can do whatever you want here. Um, there's this air smash thing. This refers to the ground pound, and by default, the air smash input is uh, down and B, down and attack. I strongly encourage uh, binding this to a single button because you're gonna use this in movement combos. It's a really helpful move in movement combos, and I find it more accessible on a single button. With that in mind, there is a little funny bug, which is that if you press, if you try and press your air smash on the same frame that you're releasing jump or attack, uh, it'll kind of eat your input. Um, and that's kind of annoying. Just something to look out for, it happens. Let's see, it's happening to me a little bit there. Um, okay, let's talk about spins. Spins are critical. You gotta understand spins if you wanna really optimize this game. If you want a crazy good time on 1-1, one -one, you gotta understand spins. So each individual spin is its own move. You can't cancel a spin early and you can't just hold down B and keep spinning. Each one is its own individual move. You can do repeated spins on the ground, but you cannot buffer a spin. If you press that spin button one frame early, you do not get a spin. So doing like consistent chain spins takes a lot of skill. That part kind of annoys me. Honestly, it's really annoying when you're on a really good run and you just get a spin dropped. But I think they did it to like keep kind of a skill cap in the game. So you can't buffer your spins. Now, you can buffer spins out of jumps and buffering is really generous in this game. So if you jump, you can press B like really early and get a spin. And you can also press A really early and get a jump. It's super generous. But you cannot buffer a spin out of a spin. Now, uh, spinning is the fastest way to travel. You gotta do it a lot. And like I said, the core mechanic in this game is mid-air spin jumps. So watch this. If you're in the air spinning, you can always jump out of your spin. This is not a forgiveness mechanic. This is not a glitch. This is a central core mechanic. Not a coyote jump. There is coyote time in this game, and I'll mention that. This is a central mechanic. If you wanna succeed in this game, 
casually or in the speed run, it's really valuable to get comfortable doing this. I'll see a lot of newer players, they'll be on a platform like this and they'll spin to the edge of the platform and jump off. That's not what you want to do. You want to spin off the platform and jump. It gives you more control and it's faster. Um, I, I'll mention the coyote time. So you can also just walk off platforms and jump. You can do coyote jumps and it's super generous. Again, you have a bunch of frames to do this. You cannot coyote spin. If you're off the platform, you cannot spin, but you can jump. And what you can do is you can coyote jump out of a midair spin. So I can spin, let it end, and then still coyote jump. Now, let's talk about optimizing spins. You have two options with spins. You can just do chain spins on the ground. I call this flat spins. You can just do chain spins like this. Alternatively, you can spin and jump. Now, if you notice when I spin, pay close attention. The spin has this speed pattern. It goes slow, fast, slow. Slow, fast, slow, slow, fast, slow, slow, fast, slow, slow, fast, slow. You want to jump during the fast part. So if you're just spinning and jumping like early during like the slow part, you're not you're not getting any speed. This isn't helping. You want to jump during the fast part of the spin. And you also don't want to um, you don't want to like let it end and then jump. You really want to jump during that fast part and that kind of boosts you forward. In fact, there's a little technique. You probably missed it, but I did it right here. You can jump in this. And you can use that to reset your spin. So you can spin and then jump and get a new spin, which basically like cancels out the slow frames at the end of the spin. I call this a tree jump because you're doing it in the little tree tunnel. It's a tiny little, tiny little optimization. Um, if you hit enemies, you speed up and it's good to jump out of those spins. So the question is, which is faster? Is it faster to spin jump or is it faster to flat spin? And that's a really good question. So again, I don't have perfect knowledge here, I believe there was somebody early in the early days of this game who had some analysis tools, and I believe that person said that if you do perfect inputs, spin jump is slightly faster. Now, if you're on hills, if you're on an uphill, spin jumping is better. If you're on a downhill, flat spinning is better. On flat ground for an RTA runner, they are almost entirely interchangeable. They're essentially the same average speed. You can do spin jumps or you can do flat spins. It's like the exact same average speed. Now, Here's where that matters. This is actually very relevant. The difference between spin jumps and flat spins is that spin jumps cover a longer distance. Let me show you where that's relevant. This platform over here is a really good example of this. Take a look at this platform. What we want to do here is when we cross this gap, we want to land as far left as possible on this platform right here. We want to land all the way on the left so that we can start spinning immediately. We want to spin across this platform and we want to get as far as possible to the end of the platform because we want to spin jump over this gap. We don't want to jump here and float over this gap. That's just spending a lot of time floating. And we basically want to cover as much of the map as possible with spins. So ideally we want to get to the edge of this platform, spin across and jump just like that. That's the goal. However, pay close attention. If I start here and I do flat spins, watch what happens. One, two, three, and the third spin puts me just barely over the edge. So if I just do flat spins, it's gonna go spin, 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 and I have to jump from here and that's not what I want. So what I can do instead is I can go spin, jump, spin, jump, and now I'm further away. So now I can do a third spin, jump. So those spin jumps make the spins go longer, but still take the same amount of time, like on average. And that allows me to basically get to the edge of the platform so I can cross this gap with the spin. Save some frames. Um, there is a third option. What you can do is you can go spin, spin, spin. And you can do a little shake right there. You can turn around real quick so that you can stop on the platform and pull off another spin. Some platforms are just barely too short to fit in a full spin and actually doing that, doing a little wiggle right there at the end and squeezing in an extra spin is faster. In a few instances, that's not the case here. Here, the fastest way that I know of is to do the two spin jumps. So spin jump, spin jump, and spin across like that. So if you hear me talking about spin patterns and like optimizing spin patterns, that's exactly what I mean. And where I choose to do flat spins, where I choose to do spin jumps is very precisely routed. The deltas in this game, like the margins in, in terms of like aisles, and I love grinding aisles. I mean, I don't do that much full game running. I really do aisles in this game. And the margins are very thin, like 
tenths of a second, really, hundredths of a second sometimes. So every frame counts, especially in this level. In this level, every frame counts. So that type of thing is really important. Um, what else? There's one more thing I want to say about spins. I think just one more thing. So there's another interesting thing to point out with spins, which is that um, if you spin off a platform and then land on another platform like that, you go from platform to platform, landing will stop your spin. And that can be useful because, again, it can cancel the slow frames at the end. So you can just go spin, spin like this. So if you can set this up somewhere, this can be useful to just get a spin into another spin. Um, okay, uh, let me check my notes. So uh, those, I think, that's mostly what I want to say about spins. That covers spinning. Let's talk about the other moves. We have uh, floating. So floating, you just hold B in the air. You can release and repress it. It's extremely flexible. Um, and you have quite a lot of air control. You can drift around. Floating is incredibly useful. You should use it a lot. What floating is really good for, let me actually um, retry here. There's no lives in this game, by the way. You can retry as many times as you want. Um, I just want to respawn the enemies. What floating is really useful for is you can make these types of jumps where you don't have to jump high, but you can float to kind of control your speed. So when I cross this gap, instead of having to do a really big jump and kind of like plan out like where I'm going to land, instead of doing that, I can just do a short jump and then float to like compensate. So it gives you air control and adjustment. So floating is incredibly useful. You definitely want to use it a lot. Always keep in mind it's there. Um, uh, and one other thing regarding floating, I think this is a very clever choice with game design. If you notice when I spin off a platform, I have like this down diagonal trajectory. And that sort of trajectory is like the same trajectory I have when I'm just floating sideways. And what that means is spin jumping off of platforms is going to be comparable in distance to simply jumping and floating. Which means that the game isn't designed to really force you to spin jump anywhere. In fact, you can really beat the whole game without doing mid-air spin jumps. But mid-air spin jumps are faster and they give you more control. So it really is designed where you don't have to use it. because, But because this um, kind of down diagonal trajectory makes it so that you're kind of following the same path. It's just floating. But it's faster and it gives you more control. So it's really useful. All right. Let's talk about the last move. So we got one more move to cover, and that's the ground pound. And this is a very interesting move. When you first play this game, you probably never use this. The ground pound has three purposes in order. Going up, going down, and finding treasure. The ground pound move is this move. And if you notice when I start it, she kind of wobbles up a little bit and then comes back down. You actually gain height from that. And it's a lot of height, and it's really useful. So one of the beta testers in this game said that the height gain was not actually originally intended, and that the ground pound just looked really static if she just tumbles in place and then falls. So they made it so that she would move up, and then that turned out to have the effect that it actually like moved her collision up. And then they decided that it was actually good for, you know, the mobility and the dynamics of the game, and they decided to keep it. And I think that was a very clever decision. I'm really glad that they did that. So the ground pound move can be used to go up, and this is what we're going to use it for more often than not. Otherwise, you can use it to go down, obviously. If you need to just plow through an enemy without bouncing off of it, you can ground pound. Also, there's some enemies where ground pound and them bounces you higher. So it's useful for that. And then there's treasure in the ground and a few levels um, that, we, you know, for collecting gems, we're going to need the ground pound to get those. So those are the, that's the functionality of the ground pound move. And one thing to point out that's uh, really important to know about this move, if you want to use it for speed runs, is you'll notice when I ground pound, we have like this landing lag. So we kind of just get stuck in place. If I try and jump, I'm like frozen in place. I think it's like a quarter second of landing lag. But what's really awesome is that you can straight up L cancel it with a spin. You can cancel your landing lag with the spin. And you can buffer the spin. And so a lot of times when you come out of a ground pound, you're just going to want to spin. But also you can cancel your spin with the jump. So if you just want to bounce with the jump, you have to basically spin cancel your pound and then jump cancel your spin. So this is really valuable. We're going to be doing this a lot. We're basically spinning any time that we land from a ground pound. So that's the ground pound move. Okay. One more funny thing I want to talk about, and that's slopes. We have a slope right here. So um, 
the uh, thing with slopes, is slopes force you into this um, kind of sliding state. And uh, if you're on a shallow slope like this, you can also slide down these. You never want to. Sliding is slow. It's bad. You want to spin. You never want to slide. Down these like 45 degree slopes, you also can spin if you start to spin like from here. But once you're in the slope sliding state, you cannot start a new spin. Now you can start up a spin as you're landing. That works. Another thing you can do is you can basically spin and then you can do another spin out of this spin, but it's frame perfect. It is 1 60th of a second frame perfect. I'm kind of bad at getting them. This is, in my opinion, a very annoying mechanic, the fact that it exists, because it has to be used to save time. In IELTS, every frame counts. Um, but it's exactly 36 frames, 0 0.6 seconds, um, and it's a frame-perfect input, and I'm trying it over and over again, not getting it. It's really hard. In full game runs, it's the type of thing that you just kind of go for, and you might get one or two of them throughout the run, and it's kind of swag. In an IL, there's a couple ILs. This IL depends on it. It's actually not on this slope, but on an earlier slope in the level. It requires a slope spin just because of how optimized it is. I, I'm, I'm not even getting them, so uh, yeah, you're not you're not going to see it. But maybe uh, maybe later on in the show, you'll get to see slope spins. There's one more funny thing with slopes, which is it, so when you're in the slope state, when you're sliding, you can't uh, you can't spin. And so if you slide off of a slope and try to buffer spin at the bottom, you can't buffer your spin. And normally you can buffer your spins when you're landing, right? But if you're in a slope and you try and buffer, you can't buffer your spin. And if you hit those springs that we saw on one, two, the jellies, and you start bouncing after coming off of a slope, the the unable to buffer state kind of persists. And I finally came up with a name for that. I call it slope curse. So if I'm coming off of a slope and I'm trying to spin and I come here and I can't spin, that's because I was slope cursed. I had the slope curse state. All right, that's all I want to say about basic movements. Let's move on. So. If you know, if you understand all that movement, you know about 60% of this game. Okay. Because this game is not just about K's, this is K's and the Wild Masks. So let's meet the Wild Masks. The first mask shows up in 1 4. This is Thorny Tree. And the level starts with just a little bit of uh, platforming. We got a nice little tree jump we can do right there. Pound up to that. Meet a new enemy, the tomato. Do with the bazooka. And here's our first mask. This is the bird mask. As soon as you touch the platform, you transform. I'll show you the transformation animation. You can skip this cutscene. I normally do it out of habit, but there it is. And the bird is literally Squawks from DKC2. All right, she's just straight up Squawks from DKC2. So she can fly up. You have to press A to fly up. She can fly left and right if she has an attack. Now, one thing that's really clever that they did in this game, I really like this a lot, is you do not have to mash A at 30 hertz to fly up at maximum speed. She has like a vertical speed limit, and you only have to mash maybe three or four times per second to like hit the speed limit. So you do not have to break your fingers, you do not have to break your buttons to go full speed upwards. Um, maybe if you can hear my keyboard, uh, if you mash at about this speed, that should be about max speed. I like to mash about this fast because, you know, when I'm running, I'm really anxious and everyone knows the harder you press the button, the faster you go. <laughs> I feel called out. <laughs> you do that too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. My left index finger, which holds the right direction, is always so sore after like three hours of playing just from holding right so hard because I got to go faster. But anyways, you don't have to mash that hard uh, to go fast vertically with the bird, which is great. And uh, the attack forces you to stop. So for the most part, you never want to use it unless you have to. Um, the bird levels, because the movement is so normalized, the bird levels turn into sort of auto scrollers. There's not a whole lot to do to optimize them. Um, but there is a very nice strategy that comes up here, um, which is that there's going to be some spikes in the way. These guys just hold right and down and you'll never hit them. Uh, these guys are in the way. And so uh, we're just going to damage boost right through them. And again, like I said, when you're running IELTS, you only get one health. There's only one spot you can take damage. And a lot of times the developers built in only one spot where you need to take damage. So I think that that's the developer intended damage boost right there. So we just can go right through those dudes. 
So that's the bird mask. Bird mask is pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to talk about with it. Let's move on to the next mask. Next mask coming up. Starts in 1-7. So 1-7 is going to introduce us to a new mechanic. This is water. All right, so here's how the water works with the rabbit. Uh, she automatically swims to the surface because she needs to breathe air. So she can't hang out under the water like Donkey Kong can. Um, now, uh, she you can jump out of the water, obviously, and you can dive. If you press B, you dive under, but she'll come back up automatically. You can't stay down. Now, when you land in the water, you automatically dive. You can hold A to swim up a little bit faster. But if you're floating when you land in the water, you don't dive. And so as we traverse this water, we're going to need to alternate whether we're floating into the water because in some places we want to dive and other places we don't. The water horizontally is slower than the air, so we normally want to jump out of the water as much as we can. So here we're going to dive under to go under that wall. Here we're going to dive under to go under those peas. Here we're going to spin through this carrot, do another spin. We're going to not dive here so we can leave the water immediately. We're going to not dive here so we can leave the water immediately. And then we're going to damage boost on the thorns here so that we can spend time in the air instead of being in the water. Go for a slope spin. There's the slope spins you wanted. Two frame perfect slope spins in a row. Mega swag if you get them here. <laughs> Anyways. And welcome to the next mask. This is the shark mask. All right, so the shark is kind of like on guard. So the shark can swim in any direction. And uh, she can obviously uh, breathe the dissolved oxygen in the water, so you don't have to come up for air. When you're out of the water, you can, um, you're can you basically just the, the rabbit again. You can float, you can spin, you can ground pound. The shark has two main moves. So if you hold A, she swims faster. That's what they tutorialize right here. They tell you to hold your jump button to accelerate. You can swim a little bit faster, and she kind of has to swing around. Um, if you stand still, she can kind of turn, but if you are like swimming, she has to sort of swing around and loops. And then the other move is, of course, you have a dash attack. Um, she doesn't auto attack, so if you just walk into an enemy, you'll get hit. You need to hit him with the dash attack. And as you can tell, the dash attack is faster. So we're basically just doing like spin chains underwater. Now, if you play on controller and you have an analog stick, you do have an advantage here. You have omnidirectional movement with the shark. It's the only place in the game where omnidirectional movement is present. Don't worry, I have plenty of ways to mitigate that. I can still get some impressive times without it. Um, However, there's a really cool technique that we can do with the shark. I'm gonna try and show this off to you in slow motion. I'm gonna do some pausing. It's a little bit hard to see behind the pause screen, but try and bear with me. I'm gonna try and show this off in slow motion, then I'll try and show it at full speed. So uh, what we're gonna do, let me, let me actually demonstrate right here. So if you're holding A, she'll just jump out of the water. If you press B, she'll jump out of the water. But if you don't press either button, you can just swim up to the top of the water. And you can dash kind of parallel to the surface. If you jump out of that dash, you'll get a little bit of a launch. In order to do this, if you actually press B and then A like immediately, she doesn't get the launch. You need to delay the buttons to be about like three to four frames apart. Again, I don't know exactly, but it's like one you want to have like a little bit after the other. And so um, me being a Celeste player, shout outs to the Celeste fans out there. Um, I decided to name this technique uh, Shark Super. This is called Shark Supers. I discovered it. I get to name it. <laughs> Um, so shark supers come into play in a very interesting way in this level. I'm going to try and show this in slow motion and then we'll see if we can speed it up. So the, to set this up, first thing you want to do, you want to set yourself up right about here. We're going to do a shark super right here and we want to land right on the boundary between the wood and the grass. And then we're going to spin through that carrot. So we're going to spin through that carrot and that's going to take us right to the edge of this platform. Then we're going to spin off the platform into the water. And we're going to land right underneath the peas. Oh, I missed the spin. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me see if I can back this up and try this one more time and get the peas, respawn the peas. This might not work, but we're going to land right in front of the peas, and then we're going to do a shark super through the peas. And I totally goofed it up. Let me see if I can do it at full speed for you. It looks really cool. I'm going to give it two or three tries. Uh, mask spawns are checkpoints. So if you, re if you, if you pick up the mask, uh, you have a checkpoint there. Uh, let me give this uh, a couple tries. Oh, bonked that one. I don't even need the heart, actually. Uh, let me just give this a handful of tries, because it'll, it'll look cool if we get it. Uh, all right, one more try. It's a hard technique to get. 
basically, um, you can get a speed boost from the peas there, and you can get like a big ol' yeet. Oh. There it is, just like that. Sometimes I got a shark super so powerful that I bonked the wall all the way on the right side. That's that's actually what happened in my uh, PB. That's on um, my IL PB. Um, but okay, we got one more shark super right here. Oh, wait, forget that guy. He doesn't count. Um, anyways, you normally I wouldn't get hit there. Uh, and there's one more thing to show off in this level, which is you see these bullets, uh, these artichoke, the artichokes are the enemy shooting them. Uh, they're shooting these little bullets. So uh, the collision and hitbox in this game are very generous. And so we have this little puzzle here. Where we're supposed to swim around the bullets. We don't actually have to do any of that. Uh, that's completely oh, wow. optional. Oh, and again, wow. <laughs> developer intended? I personally think so, but I don't know. Yeah. That's a really interesting level. This level is all about nailing the shark supers and um, going for the most optimal lines. Like you just want to take the shortest path possible and just doing the spins like as perfectly as you can, doing the dash attack as perfectly as you can. So, um, all right, let's call Funky's flights here and we're going to head over to world two. I'm going to show you the next mask. Someone said it in chat, but we're not there yet. Oh, is that Tyrant? What's up, Tyrant? Uh, we're not there yet. We're going to do the tiger first. So what I'm going to do, so the tiger first appears here in two, four. 2-3 is the bonus level, which also features the tiger. The bonus level you have to play at the end of the world because you have to get the green gems. But I'm going to save 2-4 for later. I got something else in store for 2-4. So I'm going to show off the tiger mask in 2-3, the bonus level. We're just going to start spawned in as the tiger here. The bonus levels are really short, kind of gimmicky. But here's how the tiger works. Um, he can no longer spin. He can no longer float. Your B button does this horizontal dash. You can't dash in eight directions. It's just left and right only. Um, and the other thing he can do is he can climb walls. So if you're on the wall, he'll kind of slowly slide down like that and you can jump. Those are his main moves. You still can ground pound. Um, and uh, after a dash, you'll notice that we get put into like the spinning state. So in the spinning state, we're kind of like we can't dash again. But once you bounce off an enemy, you get put back into your flat jump and you can dash again. It's kind of the whole gimmick of this level. They tell you where the enemies are going to be. And we're basically just bouncing and spinning. Um, those guys, the armored beats. Uh, these red dudes are beats, by the way, not tomatoes. The tomatoes are the bazooka dudes. Um, but uh, the uh, I'm just gonna take this level real chill because I haven't really practiced this level a whole lot. Um, uh, oh, but no, uh, let's see. I'm gonna have to play this level in the run. <laughs> see if I can go a little faster in the run. But anyways, um, that's the tiger mask. Tiger mask is my favorite. And I'm going to show off 2-4 later. We're going to see the original Tiger level. Um, I got some something planned for you. So uh, stay tuned. Look forward to that one. That one's going to be cool. All right. One more mask to show off. This is a lizard mask. Lizard mask number one, right? All right. So the lizard mask, I'm going to tell you for real, a lot of people do not like this mask. Casual players and speedrunners don't like this mask. Me personally, I love this mask. I think the lizard mask is awesome. But I had to really memorize, I had to like sit down and memorize the levels before I really came to appreciate it. So let me show you how the lizard mask works. We touch the um, statue, we get the transformation. Now we're the lizard. Rar. And he is an auto runner. The lizard mask just runs forward. Do not touch your directions, they don't do anything. The lizard has two moves. He has a big floaty jump with a double jump. So you have this double jump you can do, and your second move is that dive, which you can use to hit enemies, you can use to bring yourself back down to the ground. Now, um, if you uh, pay close attention, you might notice that as I'm going downhill, I'm actually speeding up a little bit. When I'm going uphill, I'm slowing down. And you might notice that if I'm in the air, if I come off of a down slope, like, Oh, oopsies. Uh, let me show it right here. So I'm going to come off this down slope and I'm going to jump. And I'm still kind of going sort of fast. Still kind of got my speed. The kind of tutorial is right here. Down slope, jump, and look at that. I'm kind of going a little bit fast. So there is actually a way to control your speed in this level. And that's the technique. The technique is you run down a down slope and then you start bunny hopping. No pun intended. <laughs> now, if you are in the air, you don't gain or lose any speed. Your speed is constant. If you do a frame perfect jump, 
your speed will stay constant. So ideally, you can get maximum speed on that big downslope at the beginning, and then just do frame perfect jumps. Now that sounds really hard. Frame perfect when you touch the ground. Fortunately, it's not. Because if you do a dive, then the game actually gives you an extremely generous window to buffer your jump. You have like an entire second where you can be holding the jump button, or maybe like half a second where you can be holding the jump button and it'll just automatically give you a jump when you land. And that means there isn't really any mechanical skill involved to just frame perfectly keep jumping. That means that we can do exactly that. We can get maximum speed right here on this first slope. And then we can just start doing this and never lose the speed. So, What's the challenge of the level? The challenge is routing. You need to memorize the platforms, memorize the enemies, and know where you're going to be jumping. And know exactly when to hold your double jump, when to spend your double jump, when to dive. And uh, that's really what the challenge is in this level. Because any time that you do not buffer your jump, you're slowing down. But again, I'm just holding A before landing. I just dive and then I hold A way before landing and I just automatically jump when I land. I just bounce off the ground. Uh, so I think the lizard levels are fascinating. I love them. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, if you memorize them, I say you, you got to memorize. You got to know what it's doing. It's very grindy. It's very learny. But once you know what you're doing, it's like a, a really fun challenge. In fact, I'm not going to lie. Lizard is my second favorite mask after Tiger. Yeah, this I, movement I, looks incredibly fun to do. Yeah, Liz Lizard's awesome. My my tier list is Lizard, uh, or Tiger, Lizard, and then Bird, and then Shark. Heck, the Shark. I don't like the Shark. <laughs> She's really hard to control. Um, but, uh, and those Shark Supers are so annoying. Um, anyways, so those are the masks. So now you've seen the main gameplay of the game. So now what I want to do is um, I want to go through... Uh, a few, I want to show you guys some glitches. I, I got a few different random glitches to show you. And the first one is right here in this level. So this level, um, two five is a uh, floating level. So you have this upwind is like the main gimmick. And if you're, if you're floating in the upwind, you go up. Um, it kind of slows your fall a little bit as well. Um, there's a lot of tomatoes. And what you'll notice is if you're looking at, pay close attention to the gems and pay close attention to the enemies, you'll notice the gems kind of wobble up and down a little bit. If you look at the tomatoes, the tomatoes wobble up and down a little bit too. And what you uh, might ask yourself is, does their collision wobble too? The answer is it does. This is very annoying. And this is one instance where it matters. So watch this guy wobble up and down. I'm gonna hit him while he's wobbled down or I'm going to hit him when he's wobbled up, and he's going to damage me. Let me try and hit him when he's down. And if I get him when he's down... Alright, one more try here. So if you get him when he's down, you should be able to just spin right through. Here we go. Quite inconsistent. It's very annoying. There's only about, like, four instances in the game, I think, where that is actually relevant, where the wobble of the... Um, uh, of the enemy kind of matters. Um, I don't need to finish this level right now, but that's one of them, and that can be quite annoying. Um, I'm going to go back to 1-2 to show you a couple glitches over there. A couple things to look at. Still sad that the experimental shark mechanics got shut down. I wonder what those were. I don't know if you'd mentioned that in the Discord before. I haven't seen anything about that, but anyways. Um, so, I'm going to show you, there's a couple other kind of funny glitches. So. As you can imagine, kind of a common thing in games, if you hold your jump button when you bounce off an enemy, you high bounce, right? So if I just let go of all of my buttons, just do like a normal bounce, if I'm holding A, I high bounce. It's hard to see, but it is relevant in several places. Here's what's annoying. If you're holding A and holding B, so you're also holding your float, then guess what? No high bounce. I know it's hard to see, I know it doesn't really come through, it's relevant in some places, and it took me a while to figure out that's what's happening. So if you have to float to an enemy and then high bounce off the enemy, you have to make sure to release float like right before you stomp the enemy, or else you do not get a high bounce. Super annoying. 
Um, one more kind of uh, funny interaction that happens is if you're looking at these uh, springs. These springs do a really funny thing. Which is that if you are holding A and B when you land on the spring, and I want to I want to get a little bit further, I want to get to this part of the level. If you're holding A and B when you land on the spring, uh, you get this weird slow lock, and you just move slow. And in fact, if I let go of B, as long as I keep holding A, I'm like stuck in this slow lock state. If I let go of A, I can I can get my normal speed back. But if I start floating again, boom, slow lock. And that is uh, super annoying. So again, if you're landing on one of these, you got to make sure to release B before you land on the spring or you get put in this little slow thing. Um, okay, those are all the glitches I have here. There's a couple more that I want to show you. So there's some weird glitches. So um, let's head over to World 2. This is Slingshot Ride. This is one of my favorite levels. I love this level. This level has features two kind of main mechanics. The first is these slingshots. They are literally just barrel cannons from Donkey Kong Country. There's the ones that fire you automatically and the ones you fire on your own manually. And then there is the pots, which are again, just like um, barrels. The pots will have items in them. She literally just throws them like Dixie Kong. Like, I mean, you can't get more direct than that. Now, like I said, the pots have items in them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start up a run. We need to be on original mode or uh, like we need to be, we, we, we can't do an aisle, so no clock. So we need to have the items present. Uh, casual mode's fine too, but we need the items present. And this pot, of course, as you can see by what's on it, has a heart in it. So I'm going to break this pot, spawn a heart. I'm not going to pick it up. I'm just going to hop in the pit and restart the level. So that heart is there. All right, now I'm going to grab the clock and the clock starts the time trial. And in time trial, there are no items, right? So nothing comes out of the pots anymore. Now I'm gonna go back to where that heart is. The bunny is a monkey. <laughs> the glitter is still here because that affects your movement. Um, and the pots are still here because the pots are, in, in time trials, the pots literally just get in your way. All right, so the pot is here. So I can break this pot, nothing comes out. Okay, no one's surprised. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump in the pit and restart again. And this time, no clock. I should be, I, oh, I got to use my speed scratch. Let's, let's go a little bit faster. Come on, let's do some, let's do some crazy movement. This glitter usually speeds you up, but I actually skip it so I can spin through that guy. Jump over those. Those are corn traps, by the way. They're basically clap traps. Um, and uh, there's a heart there. And that's a real heart. That, that'll protect me. I, I can take damage. Let me, um, let me throw that. So, uh, you can dupe the hearts. There's like a duplication. And it's just funny that that's not useful in any way, but it's funny that there is like, that items are persistent between runs somehow. That item persistence is something to look into because I think there can be some instances of that there could be a way to abuse that in another way to optimize IL strats. So with that in mind, I'm not going to finish this level. I'm going to show you one more level with something that's completely related to that. And this is 2-6. Uh, in this level, uh, this is a wind level, and there is a mechanic that I was actually going to come on here and offer a bounty if anyone could figure out how to do this. I figured it out like less than a week ago. I like sat down, scienced it out, and finally figured out what's going on. So in this level, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the clock. Uh, we've got the wind coming through. Uh, we just want to basically spin jump through the wind to go as fast as we can. We do need to be on the time trial here. The time trial is relevant. And as we make some progress through the wind, we're going to get to this section. Now pay close attention right here. Watch this. This ledge, you can see there's wind. The wind's going to push me across this gap. I'm going to jump off of this uh, ledge right here. Shout out to uh, her busted animation. She thinks she's still on the slope. Um, I'm going to uh, spin, jump, float off this ledge and watch my trajectory here. Spin, jump, float, and I'm going to barely make it to that platform. I just barely made it here. Now, you cannot optimize that jump to get any further. You're going to make it to this platform every time. Okay, this is a bird level, so let's pick up the bird. And what am I going to do with the bird? Bird's a checkpoint. This is why it's important to have the clock, because I don't want that checkpoint. I'm going to go into the forward wind here, and I'm just going to uh, die against the spikes. 
So I don't want the checkpoint. I'm going to restart the level from the beginning. Now I can pick up the clock or not. It doesn't matter. Um, clock, clock isn't relevant here, but doing that is going to set something up. Which is that if I keep going through the wind, everything's looking pretty normal. And we're going to get back to this spot. Big wind spot. And we're going to get back to this jump. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Spin, jump, float. Watch what happens. No! We just get this mega wind boost that pushes me way over the platform into straight into the mask. That's awesome. And that saves about 0.8 seconds, which is humongous in this game. It's a gigantic amount of time. That glitch was known about all the way back in 2021, and the records had that glitch in it, but we had no idea how to get it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just damage boost right there. Um, and the uh, record had that glitch in it, but because we had no idea how to do it, we, it was literally just reset until you get. And I finally figured out how to do it like a week ago, and that means that I can do it consistently. I can start cleaning up other parts of the run. And with that being consistent, I managed to break another second barrier on this level. In the last, like, two weeks, or maybe three weeks since I was invited to play this game, I came back, I started looking at IELTS, and I've already broken four of the records in oh, IELTS. So this game is, like, very much still, like, wide open and alive. There's very much, like, time save on the table. And three of those record breaks, no, two of them include second barriers, but one of them includes a second barrier which is available. So I'm, I'm still working on that one. We'll get to that one. Those are all the glitches I've got at the moment. Yo, what up, Soil? Welcome in. Good to see you. Now, I have a question for you guys in chat. Is the bird wind barrier staying activated? No, so it only happens uh, once Once you trigger it once, you have to set it up again. You have to do the setup again. So, um, all right, anyways, so I have a question for y'all in chat. How many of you have picked up a new game, you love it, you have a lot of fun, you want to speed run it, you spend a week speed running it, you get some runs down, your run has a bunch of deaths, a bunch of noob strats, you know? Like you've just done, let's say, five runs. And you go watch the world record, and you look at the world record strats, which are crazy fast, and then you spend the next six hours just trying to copy what the world record does in World 1. Right? How many of y'all have done that? I know I know, y'all yep. have all been there. <laughs> right? Yep. You're a total noob, you've only played for a week, you just try and copy the world record strats, right? Alright. I'm gonna show you guys all the strats you shouldn't be doing. Let's start right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna put on casual mode for a moment. I'm gonna need it later. So uh, actually, let's go over here. Casual mode, uh, casual mode just gives you more health, more checkpoints. Um, it's not super relevant right now, but I'm gonna need it later. This is one five vine climb. So this is a really interesting level. This is a vertical level. This level depends on climbing. There are, well, all right, let me, let me just show you the basic mechanics first. So uh, you have these ropes you can climb on. Jumping across them is faster. So you don't wanna walk, you wanna jump. Uh, dropping down and spinning is even faster. Um, you have these vertical ropes. Um, and there's a pot which gets in our way. Very annoying pot. So the vertical ropes, you can walk up. You can walk up and down them. Uh, that is slow. Um, you can ground pound up to them. That will be relevant. Um, and you can, if you hold up, you can jump up the rope. That is faster. There is something that is even faster than that, which is instead of just holding up and jumping, when you're going, you do a little tiny wiggle. So you hold up and you do a little tiny wiggle left and right, and she re-grabs the rope faster. I call this wiggle climbing. It's kind of hard. With practice, it gets somewhat consistent. It's a bit faster than just flat jumping uh, up the rope. Um, and let me see if I can get this. There's one, there's a little funny glitch. Do a little float at the top. Just climb up to the top and press B, do a little glitch there. Um, but uh, wiggle climbing is slightly faster. Um, and uh... all right, those are the base mechanics of the level. Let me so let me show you the run. This level, there. So this game, there are two like major shortcuts in this game. Both of them are in this level. The first is on the any percent route. So uh, I'm playing on casual mode for the moment. So if uh... so, we'll we'll pick up the heart. We're gonna have two HP. I'm only gonna need one of them. But anyways, uh, we're going to run through the level. We're going to climb up that rope, skip the pot. 
jump across here. We got some platforms to the left. We don't need those. We're just going to bounce off this guy and ground pound up to the rope. Wiggle climb to get in front of the bullet. Uh, ground pound climb up these. Again, we've got to spin cancel the ground pounds. All right, pass through the checkpoint. Uh, one more rope to ground pound. And we're supposed to go to the right here, but we go under these guys. Damage boost, ground pound, and skip everything over to the right. That saves around, I think around like 15, 20 seconds. It's a big save. Um, that is the any percent shortcut. The other shortcut is also in this level and it's on the 100% route. So now what I need to do is I actually need to switch the difficulty back to original. This is why I need it on casual. I need to enter this level with Hogo. I need to have my HP here. This level has 102 gems and two hearts. That means if I enter it with a heart, I can have up to 112. The shortcut skips a 10 stack. That means that we can only miss because we have to miss that 10 stack. We can only miss two gems on this route. So here's what we do. We're doing 100%, really don't wanna get hit. Gotta grab the letter there, gotta come over here and get these gems. We gotta go behind this tomato and here's our first bonus. Let's get those spinning emotes in chat. I see y'all. We're gonna do lots of spins on this run, lots and lots of spinning. Now, uh, once again, no randomness in these. These are entirely pathed out. They're entirely determined, so I just memorize where they're gonna be. Uh, that's the first bonus. On our way back, we can spin through the tomato here. Uh, but we still have to wait for this bullet. Kinda gets in the way. Um, okay, I missed a gem. I can only miss one more. So I gotta be careful not to miss any gems. Don't worry about those, we're coming back for them. So we're gonna grab the heart here, take the gems from the heart, and then turn back around. We're gonna grab these three. We're gonna grab the Z. And we're gonna head up right up there, ground pound into the second bonus. We're not supposed to access it from below. We have to beat the second bonus. And we're now up here. This is part of the path that we skipped on the any percent route. So you haven't seen this part before. We gotta grab these gems. And this is where the paths converge. That's where the any percent skip takes us. Uh, we have to go uh, up this way to get the E. And I've already missed a gem, so I can only miss one of these. So I have to be pretty careful with these gems. There's my one miss. And we end the level with exactly 100. Those are the only two major shortcuts in the game. There are other smaller skips, but those are the only two like major ones. Those are actually good strats. If you do want to run full game or if you want to run the aisles, those are good strats to, to use. From here on out, I'm showing you the crazy WR strats. All right, here we go. It's time for 2-4. My split name for 2-4 is simply best level. This is my favorite <laughs> level of the game. It's a Tiger Mask level. Absolutely love this level. And I'm gonna put it on casual mode. Uh, on casual mode, uh, we have each heart gives us two health instead of one. This level has four hearts. On original mode, I have routed in four damage boosts. On casual, I have routed in eight damage boosts. We're gonna be taking a lot of intentional damage in this level to go as fast as possible. The main gimmick in this level, uh, they give us a lot of time to adjust to the gimmicks in this level. Uh, there are two. The main gimmicks are these moving platforms, and the other one is these uh, falling icicles right here. These ones fall in groups, and the first thing we're going to do is just de-boost through those. Uh, get some more moving platforms. Of course, we're going to use our ground pound to go a little bit earlier than we should be, and we have another group of icicles, so we better de-boost through those. Uh, as we proceed forward, uh, we just have a few more uh, challenges. Um, get across these platforms, squeeze in as many spins as we can. And welcome to Tiger Mask. I'll show you the Tiger transformation because you haven't seen it yet. So now we're Tiger Boy. Tiger can dash, Tiger can climb. We got two more health. That means two more damage boosts. Uh, this level features a lot of really interesting kind of Tiger puzzles and... and um, uh, kind of moves. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and use both of our health just to plow through right here. 
What I really love about this level, oh, let me shout out one more strat. Um, again, to my Celeste players, I call this the neutral jump. Um, it doesn't actually work like a neutral jump, but it looks like one. Uh, two more health. What I really love about this level is that the platforms are like so open, you can kind of just like find your own way through. Um, and like really go quite fast. That damage boost is the one that's used in the IL. Again, the IL only gets one. And we just get to use our health just to skip through all of this right here. Such a fun level. Favorite level in the game. You don't have to wait on any of the cycles. <laughs> Once you know what you're doing, you don't have to wait on any of the cycles. You just tear through the level. Um, okay, uh, a few more strats that I want to show off. Where are we on time? I got plenty of time. All right, we're good. We got some more strats to show off. Um, this is 2-5 uh, Ropes of Hope. I call this level Ropes of Dope because this is just a straight-up dope level. This is a rope auto-scroller. We're not going to be doing a whole lot of auto-scrolling. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to original mode. Um, so uh, this level is all about basically just not waiting on the ropes and jumping off them as soon as you possibly can. Uh, for example, this rope, we only have to ride uh, just a very short distance and we get to jump off it. Uh, gonna go through the heart right there, jump straight off this one. On this rope, I bet you did not expect that I was going to do that. On this rope, I bet you didn't expect I was gonna do that. And on this rope, I'm just gonna jump into the void. Where's the platform? I'm not gonna make it, just kidding. Of course I'm gonna make it, use the ground pound. Uh, right here, we have to wait on these beats, just kidding. We can just damage boost right through. That was the original damage boost in the level. That was the original one that they used in IELTS. And it's a good damage boost. It saves some time. There's actually a better one, um, which saves even more time. Uh, we just get to fly across these, wiggle climb straight up this rope. Six nice wiggle climbs. This is the only one we gotta wait on. Get a little auto scrolling in, dodge the beats. And then right here, we spin under it, low bounce. Ooh, I'm gonna do this one again. Hold on, you gotta see, I gotta do this again. I gotta do this again, you gotta see this one. Get a quick do-over on that. Uh, fly right through the heart here. Let's pick up the heart. Don't worry. We didn't lose that much time. Uh, wiggle climb right up the rope. The one rope we have to wait on. All right, and get a do-over on this part. So spin under. Oh, he's not positioning himself carefully. Let me give this uh, like one or two more tries to see if I can get this. Shouldn't be any issues. I'm actually not sure. Feels like he's a little bit out of position. I'm not entirely sure why. I do want to show this off, so let me see if I can get it for y'all. Have the devs patched anything for speedrunners throughout the game's life? That is a really good question. They did, but they weren't active for that long. They were only active for a couple months. We have just enough iframes to make it. And we're out of there. That is the IL damage boost. And in full game, we can do them both because we get two hearts. That saves a lot of time. This is the biggest margin that I have in any IL. Uh, got a full seven second barriers out of it. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so you know, that was a really good question. Have the devs patched anything? They have, but they were only around for a couple months. The game kind of died out after a few months. I started playing it like four or five months into the game's life. They were already inactive by that point. So what we've got is here to stay, unfortunately, in terms of the glitches. There's like no glitches in this game that are helpful. All the glitches in this game are just annoying. It's a bummer. <laughs> I know, Pixel Hive, if y'all are out there, I would, I would love you guys so much if you fix the glitches. I love you anyways. You guys have actually contributed to hundreds of hours of entertainment for me. I love you anyways, but if y'all could come back and fix the glitches, that would be sick. Um, the next level I want to show off, I got a few more here. A lot of people consider this their favorite level. This is my second favorite level, Toxic Lake. My nickname for this level is Ground Pound Town. You're going to see why. This is probably the hardest level in the game. And what we're going to do, we're just going to jump in and run the level, and we're just going to count the number of times we're using the Ground Pound, all right? I'm going to count it out for you. Here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Drop your predictions in chat, by the way. If you have any predictions, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Grab another heart there. 
12, 13? 14? Little horizontal section there. Fifteen. Ah, I goofed up. All right, hold on. I got to do it one more time. I didn't mean to get hit there. Give me one more try. All right, do over. One. Two. I'll make sure to get the checkpoint this time. I get the checkpoint. <laughs> Three. Four. Five. Six. I see some numbers coming in. Seven, eight, nine. That one that one's supposed to be nine. Alright, we'll count it. And there's a there's a ten I also didn't do. And there's an eleven I also didn't do. Alright, alright. I promise we're on eleven. We're on eleven, we're on eleven. I promise guys we're on eleven. Don't sweat it. All all that, that you just saw didn't really happen. Alright, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Like I said, hardest level in the game. All right, horizontal section. What I have to do up there is go a little faster. 15. 16. 17. 18. I'm gonna... There's one more at the end of the level. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put out of this one. You're gonna get to see it again later when, during the full run. Um, the answer is 19. <laughs> so 20 was a really good guess. The person who gets 20 wins. Um, okay. You're gonna, don't worry, you're gonna get to see that level again. Um, let's keep moving. I wanna, uh, stay on the estimate for this part. Uh, we got a few more levels to show off. So that's 3-6. It's a really cool level. Wish I could have pulled it off for you. Don't worry, you'll get to see it again later. Toxic Tower is straight up Toxic Tower. You got it. Straight up, shout outs to Toxic Tower. Yeah, those those bananas are jerks. Uh, Banana Bill, that's that the enemy's name, by the way. It's called Banana Bill. Um, I, I, made, I made up that name. That's not official or anything. But as you can tell, I make up a lot of my own terminology in this game. Um, the next level I want to show off, I need to switch to casual mode for this. So this is a really interesting level. Um, so we got another vertical section. Vertical sections, of course, mean lots of ground pounds. So let me switch this over to casual mode. Uh, no slope spin. All right, so this section includes rising lava. You're not actually gonna see it because I'm just gonna move a little bit uh, fast. Ground pounding off the armored beats not only helps us reach them, but also kind of launches a little further. We can ground pound up to the ladders, wiggle climb up the ladders, damage boost on that guy who's off screen and fly up to the top. That damage boost stops having to go all the way over to that left ladder. So we just get to skip that left ladder. This is the bird level, bird levels. If you saw the first one, you might think bird levels are boring. This one is very much not. This is a really good example of all the hitbox abuse we can do in this game. Um, I personally actually think that the hitbox abuse in this level is all intended. Um, those uh, bullets from the artichokes have much smaller hitboxes than they appear to have. This enemy, by the way, coming up is called Pickle Rick, and I will accept no other name. Um, we can just fly up to the left uh, side of these. We don't have to go through those. That one's pretty lenient. This one, on the other hand, is a good bit tight. Uh, nothing to sweat. These next, um, no nothing's going to hit us here. These next few uh, bullets are all out of the way. Uh, here's the developer intended damage boost. This damage boost is slower than the one that I did at the start. So in IELTS, where you only have one heart, I have to wait there. Because the one at the start of the level is faster. In full game runs, I get to do them both. Uh, come down here. Got another pickle, Rick. We got a blast. And we just got to dodge a few more cycles. Gonna fly under those. If you're a little faster, you can kind of get in front of them. Uh, we got one more little sneak spot right here. And then we got a few of these to uh, sort of go under slash in between. Those ones, you actually can't outrun. These ones, you can. So these ones, if I just keep mashing A, I'll be able to outrun that right there. And that's four one. Now, it was recognized as Pickle Rick internally good. Everyone knows it's Pickle Rick. Now, um, 
There are a couple of funny glitches on this level. I mean, I actually have a video about this on my on my YouTube. Um, so this has been known for a little while. So first of all, what's really important is the lava. The lava trigger is on that platform to the right. So when I step on this platform, the rising lava starts. The lava is an instant kill. Uh, we can we can go over that. So uh, if I come down here, I have to spin off this corner and pound. And now I can actually just go over the lava trigger just like that. And there's no rising lava. We're going to need that um, because uh, there's a second lava trigger over to the right. But we just naturally avoid that by uh, climbing over the beats. And uh, there is a third lava trigger. Which is just to the right of me. So as soon as I get off this beat and get onto the ladder, the lava is going to start. However, the lava is all the way down at the bottom of the screen. So if I speed up, grab the bird mask, and keep going, the lava isn't here yet. There is no kill plane down here. The lava is supposed to be the kill plane. So we can actually just duck under those spikes, and we are now out of bounds. That is pretty cool and all, but the lava still comes up. And we're actually trapped. <laughs> we're trapped out of bounds. Pay close attention to this corner. There's an artichoke shooting up and to the left, and there is a starfish over to the right. There's no way that's no, there's no known way to get through the um, barrier there, so you're pretty much just stuck out of bounds. Um, however, what there is, is we're on casual mode. And if we head over to the right real quick, that corner that I was in is this corner right here. And if I die here, there's a casual mode checkpoint right here. If we could figure out a way to actually, like, get your spawn point set to this casual mode checkpoint, you could death, root through, death warp through the wall. More importantly, though, if there's a way to bypass that final lava trigger, then we would be able to skip this entire part zigzagging up and to the left we would be able to skip all of this part over to the right. All of this could be skipped. We could do all of this out of bounds. All of this, the, the lava is like still down below. We'd be able to do all of this out of bounds. And we would be able to come back into the level here. Right here, we'd be able to come back into the level, presumably. If someone can figure out a way to get past that last lava trigger, we would have a massive skip in this level. I've got a $100 bounty on it. So if somebody wants to pick up this game and do a little bit of glitch hunting and figure out how to get the lava to not activate and fly over here out of bounds, I got $100 on that. What up, Hero Brian? Um, there's one other glitch in this level. So if you're thinking about collecting that bounty, you should know about this glitch. There's one other funny glitch in this level. All of the ropes have a really weird behavior. And the rope ladders in the other levels, like in 1-5 and in 2-5, they don't do this. All of the ropes do this in this level. I'll get to the top because it looks funny if we do it from the top. Um, if you climb up to one of maybe like this rope, if you go down to the bottom of the rope and then tap up, you're just gone. You can float. It'll slow the camera. There's the rising lava. It doesn't go all the way down. Um, and you're just gone. You can't get back in bounds. Your character no longer exists. You can float. <laughs> you, can, you can ground pound. Listen to the ground pound sound. You're just stuck out of bounds. If there is a way to get this warp to somehow warp you up to the mask, that would be the way to bypass the last lava trigger. I've tried all the ladders. None of them do it. They just warp you here out of bounds. So again, if anyone is looking, I got a hundred bucks on it. If you can find a way to get to the mask without activating the lava and skip the level out of bounds. Find me on the speedrunning server or on the Sodesco server. The publishers is Gamer Sodesco. Uh, they have a community server. So find me there on the K speedrunning server. If you want to claim that bounty, if you can, if you can show me how it's done. 
So there's a couple of really weird glitches in this level. All right, I got a couple more levels to show off. I got just enough time, so let's go through the remainder of the levels. I want to show off, there's a small strat here. Um, so like I said, uh, after I was invited to play this game, I uh, picked it up and I can play on casual. Yeah, yeah, I want to be on casual mode for this. Um, I picked up the game, I looked at a couple of my old runs, I played through it, and sometimes after not looking at it for like six months or a year, I just see something that I didn't see before, and that happened in this level. I was starting to look through this level and I was like, wait a minute, there's so many ways I can optimize the movement in this IL. Um, and as I was experimenting with the level, looking at different optimizations, I found something I hadn't considered. So this level features these zip lines, and what you need to know about the zip lines is that the zip line, when you jump off, so I'm gonna pause here, when you jump off the zip line, it'll push you forward. So if I hold left and jump, watch what happens. I'm holding left here and jumping, it like pushes you to the right, all right? And so this one does it in the other direction. So the zip lines push you forward when you jump. Okay. So in this section of the level, there is a sort of zigzag configuration of zip lines. Right here. I'm going to have to pause. You're going to have to look at it through the pause menu. I know it's annoying. But there's a zigzag configuration. So you can see the one in the middle is facing to the left. So the canonical strat, normally what we do is we would jump up to the middle one and then jump up to the top one. But that middle one's going to push us left. So it's going to look like this. That's sort of the natural strat. You got to do those sort of zigzag jumps. Here's what's interesting. I grab on the zip line, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip off the edge, and once you come off the edge of the zip line, you can coyote jump. I'm going to get to the edge, I'm going to do a big old coyote jump, and I'm going to grab the edge of that zip line, and you can see I grab the edge of it and I slid off. I'm now in coyote time off the edge of that second zip line, and I can coyote jump and not get pushed to the right. Let me show it to you in full speed. Just like this, coyote jump, coyote jump, and just like that, don't get pushed to the right. It saves about 0.7 seconds. That combined with just better movement throughout, I managed to cut another second barrier off this level. That is an extremely risky strat right there that I don't go for in full game runs because you barely make that corner. This um, game features like no corner correction, by the way. If you touch the corner, you are getting pushed off the platform. You are going into the pit. <laughs> it's very annoying. <laughs> For all the forgiveness mechanics elsewhere, there is no corner correction. Um, okay, so I just wanted to show that one off because that one is like brand new. Um, and like I said, new stuff happens in this game. It's kind of incredible. I have a couple more to show off. Uh, Four six. This level is called uh, Circuit Capers. I call it Toxic Tiger. It's a tiger level. Um, and the main gimmick is these moving platforms. Now, what I didn't talk about yet is cycles. And I, what I think is a very brilliant decision on behalf of the devs is that all cycles in this game are local cycles. That means that entities only spawn in when you get close to them. It's actually not based on the player. It's actually based on the camera. Um, but that means that if you uh, flub around and lose time somewhere on the level, or more significantly, if you save time somewhere on the level, then when you get to later parts of the level, the cycles are in the exact same position, so you don't need to find new strats or worry about global cycles at all. So this level might look like an auto-scroller. It is absolutely not. So there's a strat in this level. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get a quick do-over on that. You know what, I'm just gonna kill myself. There's a, there's a casual mode checkpoint. Uh, accidentally missed the cycle. Uh, so, there is a uh, section here. Let's ground pound up to that. We have one more ground pound. So myself and the other runner who had a top time, well actually let me tell the story in a moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick peyote jump here and miss the beat. Let me give that another go. Myself and the other top runner, um, we both had like 153 times in this game and then out of nowhere someone shows up and gets like a 145, saving like eight seconds. We had no idea what they did. So it's two coyote jumps. I messed it up. Give me one more go on that. Um, so what you do is off of that first platform right there. Let me give this another go. This is like the most finicky strat in the whole game. I hate the strat. 
Coyote jump, plow through the beat, another coyote jump. Oh my goodness, one more try, one more try. All right, oh, that was too early, hold on. One more second. All right. Coyote jump, through the beat, coyote jump, climb climb. I'm missing it. Uh, what you can do is you'll climb up here and uh, you'll be able to make it to the next platform. Give me one more go. I got I got a little bit of time on this. So I'm going to give this one more try. So the person who found this strat is called Sheldon's Pet Rock. I had to reach out to them and ask them how they did it and they explained it to me. So uh, I call this Sheldon Skip. And I freaking hate this strat. That's how it goes. You can get there's one more skip you can do right here. And the ending part of the level is a sort of vertical auto-scrolling section. Um, and uh, we haven't, if, if you've noticed, I haven't taken intentional damage anywhere. I messed up a couple times. I haven't taken intentional damage. So the IL damage boost is right here. You just hit this guy, scrolls the camera up a little bit earlier. Scrolling the camera up means that these platforms spawn slightly earlier. You just spawn those platforms a little early. You're kind of just waiting. Just stand on the one that isn't uh, dropping. You have to stand on this one and ride up a little further, get to the wall, and you have to stand on the high ground here, and you can dash in and ground pound up into the exit. That's Sheldon Skip. That is like my least favorite any percent uh, strat. Fortunately, I don't have to do it 100% because I need the collectibles there. Thank goodness. I have one more strat to show you guys, and then we're going to be ready to move on to the run portion. And we're going to go back to World 3, and I have a sick level to show you. If you thought 3-6 was interesting, this is 3-7. I'm going to need it in casual mode. I think we're still in casual mode. So 3-7. This is the one and only platform auto-scroller. So most of the tech in this level includes standing on the platform and waiting. Very exciting. Now, the transition parts between the platforms, those parts are pretty hard to optimize. <laughs> that means that grinding aisles for this level is pretty annoying. You have, um... Because, like, you have to optimize the transitions, but then you have to just, like, every attempt, you just have to wait on the on the auto-scrolling platform. And that means you get pretty low reset efficiency. Um, it's kind of annoying. Uh, so what we're going to do right here is we're going to get a little bit of a skip. The platform's going to come up this way. We're just going to spin off of it. A little bit off camera platforming. So the camera is entirely tied to the platform itself. It's not tied to where K's is at all. And so that means if I head over here, I can do stuff like this. And I'm just over here. The platform is not. But we just have to wait on it. Um, you can't bypass this gap without the platform, so even if you could see what you were doing, you still have to wait. We're gonna have our intended damage boost coming up. I'm gonna do it. I just recently revised how I do it, so we're gonna damage boost through there, bounce off this guy. We have a casual mode checkpoint. I'm gonna give this a handful of attempts. Hopefully I get it pretty quickly. It's pretty hard, but it looks really cool. I got a first try in practice today, so we'll see what happens. We gotta jump over the bullet here, and... Let's just watch in silence. No! I fell. So, uh, yeah, I'm just doing it all blind. <laughs> all right, we're gonna give this a couple more tries. It looks really cool if I get it. And by looks cool, I mean you can't even see what's going on. All you hear is Hazen's movement noise. I know exactly where I'm failing. It was the exact same jump. The exact same jump got me. All right, hold on, hold on. I know what I need to do here. Couple more tries. This is the last thing I want to show you. So as soon as we get this, that'll be the tutorial portion of the show. Oh, 
Oh, I missed it. All right, one more try. One more try. Hopefully I can get it. If I don't get it, I'll show you uh, kind of what's going on and uh, we'll move on. I was hoping I could get it. It's really cool if we do, but it's not a big deal. So I've been grinding this aisle. I've already improved my leaderboard time, but I actually have a second barrier I can break here. So I'm trying to break that second barrier. Ah, uh, all right, fine. That's gonna be it. I'll, I'll show you it. I'll show you it's sighted. I'll show you what's going on. It's all memorization. You want to get the most normalized strats you possibly can, but you also want to go as fast as possible. So uh, I'll go ahead and just finish it out. All right, one more try. I, I see you guys cheering me on in chat. One more try. One more. I believe. No! Oh! It's his last jump. All right, no big deal, A. We don't get to see it. Um, I can do sort of a partially blind. There's like a partially blind strat you can do. So you, you look for some of it and then you, you get off screen and you get into the exit. That That's honestly, I like the second to last jump. I failed the second to last jump like four times. So if we see what's going on, spin, jump, jump, slide, spin, jump, jump. Now these guys haven't spawned in. And that guy won't have spawned in, so he won't hit me. But what I'm supposed to do is spin, jump, bounce off him, spin, jump. And the portal's right there. Sorry you didn't get to see it, but uh, we got to move on. Um, so anyways, that is pretty much it for the tutorial portion of the show. What I want to say is, last thing I want to tell you guys, these are my three tips for success in this game. If you want to get good at this game fast, these are like my secrets to success. This is my master course, all right? Step one, play a lot in practice. Step two, memorize the levels. Step three, you thought there was some kind of get rich quick scheme shortcut? No, literally just play the game a lot and get good. That's it. That's the tutorial. Um, I really strongly encourage everybody to uh, check this game out. It's only 20 bucks. Buy it and support the developers. Uh, I think they could really use it. Um, so uh, with that, I think uh, we're ready to move on to uh, the run. And honestly, I told you guys that I didn't need a break. I think I'd like to take a five minute break if possible. Yeah, absolutely. You've been doing a great job. So we're, we're all good to take five. All right, great. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. We're going to come back here with the 100% run in five minutes and uh, stay tuned for that. It's going to be really interesting. And uh, just as a reminder to everybody, you know, we like to do these uh, breaks just so everybody can get up, stretch, get some water. Uh, but we a few quick reminders here. We do have Juneteenth, our annual event celebrating Black Independence, coming up on June 17th and 18th at 1 p.m. Eastern. Join us as we highlight the amazing talents of the Black speedrunning community. As that said, we'll see you in just a few minutes here. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Games on Quick Hot Fix. This is How to Train a Speedrunner, and we have just seen a tutorial of Kaze and the I No, alright, I blew it. Whatever, <laughs> moving on. I'm just gonna pass it over to you. <laughs> I don't I don't my brain just lagged and I just gave up. <laughs> I spent uh, so much time just being like Kaze, Kaze, I just whatever. <laughs> Kaze and the Wild Masks, the other 40% of the game. You guys, you guys are going to see a lot of Wild Masks in this run. I promise there's a lot of them. So uh, thanks again. Thanks again, Church, um, for the intro. Uh, we're just going to jump into it. We're going to do a 100% run. I'm going to give you a countdown. Uh, when we play this game on PC, which as you can tell I'm on, we normally have auto split or load remover. Um, and it just does the timing for us. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it on console timing. It's a little bit easier. So for console timing, time is gonna start when I hit go on original mode. So it's gonna start as soon as I hit go. So I'll just give you a countdown. Let's go five, four, three, two, one, go. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is hold escape to skip the intro cutscene. If you wanna see the intro cutscene, buy the game. Uh, and we do have a little bit of a Thing where Kaze just kind of drops in and wakes up and stuff like that. Ho goes right there. And we're just going to jump straight into 1-1. One, one. 
Um, so I'll commentate the run as much as possible as we go. We've already talked about kind of the basics of the game. We're doing a lot of spinning. And you've already seen 1-1, one, one, so you know the deal. Uh, we are just picking up those gems. We are picking up that heart. We are trying not to get hit for the most part. There's not going to be a lot of damage boosting in this run. Um, we got to go a little bit out of our way to get a couple things. Whoop, right there. Um, so I will actually mention uh, the world record for this game. Um, so the world record for this game is a kind of combo challenge run that I did. It was meant to be an optimized speed run as fast as possible. No baby strats. Um, if I lose time, I reset. Simultaneously, it is a damageless run. So if I get hit, even if I'm on pace, even if I don't lose time over it, I reset. Damageless speed run. It is incredibly optimized. I uh, grinded it for about three months. I would consider it one of my greatest achievements in gaming. And I got pretty much nothing went wrong. There is a bit of time save on the table for there are some strats that can save time by taking damage there's a bit of time save on the table maybe up to 20 to 30 seconds but there's practically no mistakes it's an incredibly good run so uh with that in mind i can't wait to make a bunch of mistakes uh live for you guys right here <laughs> it's gonna be exciting You've got um but that's one one this game is actually incredibly consistent, and personally, I think it's a, a lot of fun to run it. So there's really no RNG. Um, for the most part, there's no RNG in this game. Um, and just the movement mechanics, all of the forgiveness mechanics make it so that actually playing the game is incredibly consistent. My World 1 split is, I think, 1706 um, in my PB. My best World 1 is maybe two seconds faster than that. And a typical world one is no more than maybe two seconds slower than that. So if I'm like plus three, plus four on that 17 minute split, uh, I might be resetting over that. Um, that's sort of my mentality that it's just a really consistent game. So a small mistake in the first couple levels that loses a second or two, that, I mean, that's a reset. Um, I'm not gonna be resetting here, <laughs> obviously. Speaking of resets, this is a great bonus level to reset on. If, if I miss, so I can do this in like one bounce. Um, it's really easy to just miss one of the crystals and have to take a second bounce, lose a second. And like I said, I mean, the deltas are just small in this game. Like the, the margins um, are just really small. Uh, okay, so I missed four gems again. That's too bad. I normally want to miss exactly two, but no big deal. We'll just keep rolling. I'm not going to go for the craziest, most aggressive strats. Usually world one, I'll do some pretty crazy stuff just because I know I can reset it. But here, whoops, oopsies. Uh, here, I'll just be a little bit more careful. And um, again, we want to try to avoid taking damage as much as possible because every heart we have, every time we don't take damage and collect another heart, that's five gems that I get to route out from elsewhere in the stage. Oh yeah, and you're gonna get to listen to the bonus music when we play the bonus levels. There, you will have a chance to listen to it. So 100% has some interesting pacing. There's two bonuses in every level, so you you have to listen to that bonus music twice. Um, we pick up exactly those seven gems. We have 100, we don't need any more. Right here, you gotta release B before holding A to high bounce there or else you get the little slow jelly bounce glitch. The other thing in 100% is here, you have to wait on the end screen for everything to count up. You have to wait for the four letters, wait for the green gems, wait for the red gems, wait for the no damage thing to pop up. It um, means you get a little bit of downtime in this category, just waiting for the end screens. And then you have to wait for the path, wait for the level to start. It's like, I think like 23 seconds of downtime. It's a little faster in any percent. So in any percent, you want to avoid the K's letters specifically because they waste time on the end screen. And if you're in a situation, I'm gonna just take that one a little slower there, get a couple bonus gems. Um, but if you're in a situation where uh, you can take damage without, like you have a heart that you don't need, it's good to take damage in the level just because that tiny little no damage pop up loses like 0.4 seconds or something. You can get a small time save just by like intentionally taking damage somewhere in the level. You don't have a damage boost routed in. Um, I'm not going to do that for the most part. So the first uh, bonus here is hidden. All right, so watch the... Um, so I scored the, how well I did on this bonus based on the position of the right side spike. 
So the right side spike, oh no, this is not gonna be good. Um, the right side spike is moving in the uh, positive orientation. We measure his position, of course, in radians. I'm a mathematician. Um, so he was at about two pi radians or zero radians, uh, basically on the right side. That's bad. Um, the best I can do is get him at about pi radians or at about the left side. Shout outs to anybody who's joined my stream and gone through the math banter with me. I, uh, I'm just, uh, eh, I'm a math guy. Anyways, um, so each bonus has its own sort of uh, little mini nickname. That one's, that one I would call the Radiance bonus because it's just great based on the position of that guy. This one's called the Sniper bonus. Again, all the positions of the enemies here are totally not random. So you can memorize where they are and you can hit pretty much all of them off screen. Just like that. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh. All right, we lose a little time there. No big deal. Okay, no damage boost here. So like I showed you before, we have to enter the next level 1-5 with a heart. We do not want to take damage here. Taking damage here is very bad. We're just going to go nice and slow. We're just going to wait for this guy nice and slow. Even knock him out. Need that gem. If I was doing PB attempts... You can actually fly over these two guys right here. It's pretty tight, so I'm just going to wait for them and go under. And grab the rest of our gems right here. You can fly straight under that uh, bullet. We got our 100. We're good to go. And then we just mash A and fly out of the level. Dodge those spiky dudes on the right. The power-ups are good in this game. Yeah, so the, the masks are like... Um, I, I usually consider them, they're like alternate movement sections of the game where it just forces you to play in a different style. It's not a power-up in the sense that it's optional. It's not like something you can lose, but it's like uh, sort of like a forced alternate gameplay section. So it's not like the Animal Buddies in DKC where they're optional. They're all forced. All right, so we are back to Vine Climb. Again, I really don't want to take damage here. The, the gem route is very tight. I can only miss two gems. That's all I can miss. There's a funny thing that happens with the green gems. So when I leave, when I exit this bonus, there's going to be this little animation of the green gem collecting. When you're on a fresh file, every time you collect like a fresh green gem, you have to watch that animation. And that animation delays the spawn in a little bit. If there is an enemy like this tomato right here that's on some kind of cycle, he will be on a different cycle when you spawn in based on if you're spawning in in a fresh file or spawning in on a, a completed file. For that guy, his cycle on the fresh file is better than his cycle on the completed file. There's a couple other instances where it's the opposite. <laughs> where the uh, cycle on a fresh file is actually the bad cycle and the completed uh, file is the good cycle. It's a funny little thing that you have to just watch out for that I don't think people caught that in playtesting. I mean, I, when people were playtesting this game, I don't think anybody played it for like six or 700 hours, which I think is about what I'm at. Not sure exactly. So I think they just didn't catch stuff like that. All right, so we want to go ahead and grab all these gems right here. Get over, oh, get over that guy. All right, nice and careful. And we're going to end up collecting all of them. 102. 100% is really interesting because it's much more of a thinking category. Any percent is much more just run through the level, do what you do. All you got to think about is, do I have health? Can I take a damage boost? That's really it. It's much more of just a muscle memory type of uh, game. Whereas 100%, the gem routing adds like a whole new dimension to the game where you just have to consider like what your route is, keep track of your gems. If you miss any, like knowing uh, where you're at, and knowing which kind of sections of gems you can just sort of be kind of careless on and which sections you need to make sure to collect everything. Some levels have exactly 100 routed and I can't skip any. Some levels it's more like 104, 105 and I can be sloppy. Like right here, I can miss those two. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll have backups later on in the level. No big deal. 
But other levels, I'm gonna need to like collect them all in certain uh, positions. Um, hundred percent. The way I think about it is, it's really like hard mode. Like, any percent, especially, you can do any percent casual if you just want something mellow that's, like, you're not going to lose too much time over dying. Any percent original is more of, like, kind of a, a core game, but both of them are pretty optimized, and both um, are really interesting runs. In fact, original is actually faster than casual at the moment. I need to go cut some time off of casual. Original is, like, 16 seconds faster, I think. Didn't get my little spin cancel there. Uh, whoops. I usually like to just be careful and uh, make sure that I kind of ground pound up to the platforms there. But yeah, but 100% is much more, uh, it's, there's a lot more precision involved because you have to like get all the collectibles. Um, and there's much more careful routing. Now, I did not want to take damage there, but it won't actually impact me. I'll have backups. I'm going to need a couple backups in the next level, so I got to just be careful about where I'm picking up uh, my gems in the next level. Because my normal route in the next level, I'd only get like 101 or 102. So I'm going to need a couple backups. So, uh, somebody was asking if uh, no damage on every stage was a requirement for the 100% speed run. That's a great question. Thanks for mentioning that. So, uh, What's considered conventional 100% is the red gems, the green gems, the case letters. All levels, the bosses. That's considered conventional 100%. No damage is considered to be like an extra requirement. If you played Celeste, you know about the Goldens. That's essentially what it is, although they're, they're much easier than that um, for the most part. Um, so... Uh, no damage isn't considered part of like the 100% route. It's not considered part of the 100% run. It's kind of like an optional thing you can do. Um, when I was going for my 100% record, I'm just going to grab these as uh, backups. Those will be my backups. Uh, when I was going for 100% record, the damage list part was like a kind of optional uh, challenge. That was like added on. But when you're talking about conventional 100%, Damage list is not required, the time trials are not required, and um, getting essentially all achievements is not required. Um, so that's a really good question, I'm glad you asked. But I did do damage list in my PB as an additional challenge. Wasn't this supposed to be a damage list run? Hey, you know what, I tried, but no one's perfect, all right? So, uh, you know, you, you, you try and do better. <laughs> as... You're doing a great job. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, ideally I want to go for... There, there are a few places where damage does save time, and I'll probably go for it just to show them off. There's a handful of places in 100% where damage saves time. In any percent, there's about... I think there's like 40 to intentional damage boosts. In 100%, it's only like... Um, mm, five max. Uh, this level doesn't feature any shark supers, except right here. This is the only shark super in this level. Yeet. That was actually really good. If I can get out of that bonus with 17 on the clock, that's really good. I'm normally losing a ton of time in that one. Um, I'm just going to grab a couple more uh, backups right here, just to make sure I'm really on, on track. Okay, and now I'm needing the backups. Let's grab a few more backups. <laughs> Taking damage like a fool. Normally I wouldn't grab all these. All right, we can get right in front of these bullets. Not a problem. Yeah, okay. All right, I got plenty of gems. I got plenty. Just being safe. Basically, the worst possible thing that can happen in 100% is that you don't end up with enough gems and you have to, like, play the level again. So we, no matter what, we really want to make sure that doesn't happen. I will happily lose uh, five or ten seconds if it means that I have to get backup gems and I don't have to play the level again. All right, so once again, we're just phase through the hitboxes right here using hacks. That's that's a that's a strat you can do at home. That's that's not an insane world record strat. That's one you can do at home. If you want all achievements, you don't need to do a single damage list run. You just need to do each level damage list. Yeah, so 100% um damage list is useful in 100% but not necessary. In any percent, you want to take a lot of damage. For the most part, in 100%, you generally do not want to take damage, but taking damage doesn't end the run. Unless you're me and are going for a damageless run, because you want to do something crazy. 
100% damage list. You can find that, by the way, on my YouTube. You can find it on speedrun.com. I consider it, it's it's impressive. I consider it my most impressive achievement. Um, it's a good thing to check out. Anyways, welcome to the bonus levels. So the bonus levels involve like really silly gimmicks. This one is just, you can't see the platforms and you have to use um, like other indicators to know where the platforms are. Um, as you can imagine, uh, I've, I've, I'm, I've memorized it, all right? I know where the platforms are, but um, <laughs> it's a really silly level. You're supposed to chase this P. The P shows you where the platforms are. Um, like, it'll jump to them and, like, show you where they are. Yeah, 1-3, one, one dude, 1-3 is dumb. <laughs> I don't like this level. It's a dumb level. I gotta say, I absolutely adore the level design in this game overall. Like, the level design is so incredibly good. Just the way that it is not very challenging. Gives you so many options for, like, skips and speed strats. And just really lets you, like, freely play around with it and enjoy it. it is so well designed for speedrunning. And the fact that there's, like, multiple routes and multiple ways to run each level. Like, the level design is so well done in this game. With that being said, 1-3 is a dumb level, period. Sorry, it's just facts. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, three is dumb. All right. Anyways, uh, this is the first boss, Mother Mona. So the bosses are pretty much auto scrollers. They work like crash bosses. They just have like a whole invulnerable avoidance phase, and then there's a vulnerable section. Here's the vulnerable phase, and you basically she has a fire on the left and right, and you can like just jump through it and get a quick hit. If you're paying close attention, you'll see what's the intended way to do. This boss, those leaves on the trees on this side um, open out into platforms and you're supposed to climb up those to get into the fire. Um, but you have a very narrow window where you can just climb through the, um, you can just jump through the fire when she's on her way down. And each quick hit like that saves about two seconds. Um, now, if you're going for a damageless run, it's obviously risky and I reset a bunch of damageless runs here, okay? A bunch. This boss is like such a roadblock for damageless. Um, but I did pull it off in the run. And I'm glad I went for it. It was worth it. Um the uh the only thing is when the boss is coming down, if you touch the fire, you'll just take damage, no big deal. If you touch the boss, do not touch the boss when she comes down. Uh and I'm gonna hold escape to skip a cutscene. You can just hold escape. You don't have to like mash it, you can just hold it to skip the cutscenes. Um, but anyways, if you touch the boss while she's coming down, she will exit the vulnerable phase and just do a whole nother cycle. You'll lose like 35 seconds. It's terrible. So if you get hit doing that quick hit, make sure you get hit on the fire. Do not touch the boss. It was never supposed to be completely invisible forever. It's supposed to have some shine effect. Uh, well, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. One three's dumb. Sorry, I will die by that. Every other level, I absolutely love. One three is just dumb. Um, all right, this level is. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is another one of my not quite top favorite levels. Uh, this level is called Sliding Salad. I call it Slope Spin Salad because this level features freaking slope spins. And like I said before, slope spins are a frame perfect trick. There's one right here. I got it, nice slope spin. Oh, and I totally just did that out of in instinct because that's where I normally want a damage boost. So I wasn't even thinking, I totally just did that out of instinct. There's plenty of backups, I'll be fine. I'm not gonna be short on gems here. Um, normally I wouldn't want a damage boost there, but uh, there's plenty of backups in this level. Um, but uh, this level, we had a 102 on this level for a long, long time and I finally pushed through, did the slope spins and uh, squeezed out a 101. So this level is quite optimized. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just be uh, aggressive and grab most of these. Here's one of the gems where wobble matters. So if this gem is at the bottom of its wobble cycle, I can grab it just like that. But if it's at the top of its wobble cycle, I won't grab it. I miss it more often than not. All right, couple backups. Just grab those as backups. These spinies are weird too. If they're like right in the corner, they'll damage you. It's pretty strange. So you gotta like wait a moment for them to get onto the slope and they won't damage you. Okay. Ground pound to get up to the uh, gem there. I got plenty, I'm, I'm fine now. 
Not fond of the on-rails nature of the bosses in this game. Yeah, the bosses are kind of just auto-scrollers, but there actually are time save strats on all of them but one, which I'll be showing off. So like the quick hits on Mother Mona, those save two seconds each. It, it's kind of relevant, so at least the bosses are kind of dynamic. There, there's some other interesting strats with them. I feel you, they're not my favorite part of the game. There's no IL, there's no time trials for the bosses, fortunately. So you don't have to play them for time trials, but... Um, yeah, they're interesting. All right, so the first um, uh, bonus in this level uh, is uh, called Cheddar, and the second one is called Parmesan. When I get into uh, the bonus, you're going to have about a second and a half to figure out the intended way to do it. Pay close attention. All right, look at how interesting this bonus is. All right, do you see the intended way to do it? All right, we're going to do this instead. And we can get it in three cycles and use the ground pound to touch the gem. There's a lot of skips in this level. This is like a really dynamic level. I didn't, I didn't show off the whole level earlier. I just showed off the glitch. We're not going to be doing the glitch here. Uh, I don't actually need the pot. Picking up the pot is a bit slow, so I routed those ones out. You just hold right here. You will grab all the gems, but the one in the very middle. I know, it's really unsatisfying. Skip all those. So these are the um, slingshots that you have to manually fire. I need only the top two gems right there. And we're going to do some interesting skips. We can ground pound to just get right up in there. Uh, just hold A when you land. Buffer your jump. Just keep holding A, and that strat is just completely normalized. All right, we need the letter here, and we're going into the second bonus. Again, you're going to have two seconds to figure out the intended way to do this bonus. Yo, Game Fuchs, what up? Uh, all right, so can you see the intended way to do it? This is how we do it. Ah, 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 one more go. Hold on, redo, redo. All right, there we go. That's how we do it. Oh, world record is an hour 30.22 real time, so, uh, yeah, we, we've already lost some time. So, uh, yeah, um, your one grand donation is not going to happen. Thanks for the offer. And we have exactly 100 gems, and we don't need those backups at the end. Is this game from the creators of Donkey Kong? No, but it is a direct tribute to Donkey Kong. It is, uh, this game is from 2021. It's made by a Brazilian studio called Pixel Hive and is published by a Dutch, I believe, publisher called Sodesco. All right, best level. I think I don't enjoy the any percent route as much for this level as I, or the 100% route as much as I do the any percent route. I think the any percent route is more fun, but I, it's still my favorite level. I need exactly one of those three, two will do. So if the entire gem route goes according to plan, I will end the level with 101 gems. Do want all three of those. All right, Tiggy time, here we go. Nobody found this bonus their first time through. Nobody found this one. They hide them in the walls. Like, there's a little crack showing you where that it's there. But still, I swear everybody bypassed that one their first, on their first go-through. All right, we can do this one with 22 if all goes well. I need a name for that. I need a name for that bonus. All right, so right here, I damage boosted through these. No damage boost this time. Gotta wait on the platforms. I need the letter up here anyway. All right, neutral jump. Nice, that's how that's supposed to go. All right, so there's treasure in the ground right here. I don't need to stop for it because I'm on track with my gem routing. No damage boost right here. 
wonder if it's slightly faster to actually grab those gems and then take the damage boost. It might be. Anyways, we just wait on the platforms a little bit. And I swear everybody missed this bonus too. Yeah. Yeah, you have to bypass the end portal to get to the bonus. Uh, so this one, just, again, they're, they're always in the same spot. Totally memorize where, they're, where they are. We can do some nice uh, tiger tech to get them. Ground pound to get a little extra height. Shoop. And like I said, sometimes ground pound is useful for actually going down. Usually it's used for going up, but sometimes it's used for going down. You totally did the bonus levels by hovering to the gem. <laughs> yeah, I love that they give that type of stuff. Like, that's what I'm saying about the level design. I love how they give you those types of strats. Because it just makes the game such an interesting speed run. You find that type of stuff and it's like, ooh, I'm saving time. All right, so we, again, we have a very precise gem route in this level. What's great is that, like, almost all the gems are actually just in our path. So the only ones that we need to go out of the way for end up being the ones that we skip. This is probably one of the hardest levels in 100% damage lists. I reset a lot of runs here because I went for these ridiculous strats and then I do stuff like this. This is kind of a tight lineup. I need my foot to line up about where his eyes are. That'll do it. It's pretty precise. You don't have that much space for that. It saves like three seconds though. You forfeit a 25 minute run if you get hit, though. Oof. All right, and these, both of the bonuses in this level are kind of hard. All right, so that's the first one. That took a lot of rerouting to find the optimal path through it. That's the best I've got, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's another path that saves like a second. All right, so here's all the gems we don't need. I need exactly 63. Oh, never mind. Missed my jump. All right, as long as I have more than 63, I'm good. Normally, I would just jump through those um, and get exactly 63. But I have a few extra, so uh, we'll have some bonus gems. I need that one. And right here to the second bonus. This bonus has a really weird type of glitch. If you just hold right when you enter this bonus, Still land on the ground and then just keep moving right. There's like this weird glitch with certain types of platforms where if you're like holding right and release right, she just keeps walking right. I don't know what causes it, but it always happens in this bonus. You're holding right when you enter, she'll just keep moving right and walk off the side. I lost runs to that. No bonus fails was part of the damage list challenge. All right, and we actually get to wait on this one. No damage boost here. Just do the auto-scrolling rope. And there's one letter. Do not forget this one. This is a really bad one to forget. <laughs> you do not want to miss that. There's one more scenario where they put a letter, like, right past the end. They put the E right past the end of the level like that. And if you miss it, <laughs> you got to go back and do the whole level over. When I say that any of these gems are truly outrageous. Hmm. Uh, not like any of the normal collectibles. Nah, I'd say my strats are outrageous. Some of them. So with the, with the gems I in this level... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I just got that reference. I can't believe it took me so long. <laughs> well, I didn't get it. Wait, there's a reference? Did I miss something? Um, yeah. Uh, it's, so it's like, a, there, there's two references. It's like an 80s cartoon, um, and okay. also it's a, it's a lead quote. So there is an 80s cartoon called Gem. Um. Okay. I'm a little too young for that. I, I'm also too young for that. <laughs> I just know what the newer reference is based off of. Oh, I was wondering if it was like a Steven Universe reference or something. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, maybe. Well, that one totally flew over my head. 
No pun intended. Um, anyways, you, there's a really fast strat where you just go underneath and just swoop the letter, but it's quite risky. I, I don't usually go for that. That's a very risky strat. <laughs> this bonus, you want to beat this bonus without releasing right. And so the bird can um, stomp enemies. I don't know if I pointed that out. She can also stomp. She can shoot, she can stomp. Ideally, you want to stomp because it doesn't slow you down. And you can press B and then turn around, like, post-press. It's kind of what we do here. That was pretty optimal. That was actually really optimal. All right, we just sneak past that corner there. That one's totally intended. That is not even, like, an accidental hitbox situation. That one is clearly intended. All right, now this spot right here is tricky. So we're going to slip through these guys because bouncing is slow. While we wait, we jump up and grab those two gems. We have to go over here to get the letter and swoop up those gems. Wait for this pumpkin to pass and then just go backwards up that. And yeah, those are 100% damageless strats. If I get hit, I reset. Now, the backups for this level are all the way at the end. I should have 97. I usually have 97. Um, there's a funny glitch. So, uh, 96, so I'm gonna need to pick up four gems. If you pick up the gems and touch the portal before your counter says 100, they do not oh. count. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you have to wait for them to hit the counter. And what'll happen is this thing will display 100 right here. It'll display 100. And then you'll exit the level. And what you'll see is on the map, there's a display right underneath the level showing the collectibles. The red gem one won't be full and the file, it, it won't have them counted. It is That's... an incredibly frustrating glitch. That's so unfortunate. I finished a full run, not damage list, but a full 100% run and missed that. And it, my file was 99%. So here's where the lizard gets very interesting. Because in any percent, all you have to do is maintain max speed. No big deal. In 100%, you have to maintain as much speed as possible and not miss any collectibles. If you miss a collectible, uh, it's bad. You're going back. If you miss a letter, it's bad. They're pretty generous with gems. Um, but you can't miss the letters and you can't miss um, the bonuses. There are a couple spots where we do just have to slow back down. I like to hit the guy on the right uh, before the guy in the middle, just so that we can bounce straight up there into the crystal. Rar. Um, okay, I didn't get the speed from that slope, so I'm gonna have to wait for the next slope to speed up. Like, if you forget to dive there, you gotta go back to that letter. So I'm keeping my speed here, but I'm not gonna be able to keep it through the whole level. We got our second bonus right here. This bonus gives you a little slope. <laughs> and when you run to the end of the slope, it puts you barely, just slightly, just slightly over base running speed, which means we're B hopping. We're doing the ground pound B hop routine. If you don't do that, if you slow down to normal speed, you'll touch the end of the level with right as the clock hits zero. Since we did that, we hit it with the clock at two. So it saves just over a second, nearly two seconds. Okay, we got to speed back up again right here. Don't forget the letter. And this letter you kind of have to slow down for. So now we're going normal speed. No reason to bounce up and down anymore because I don't have any extra speed. Um, until we're going to hit a shallow slope here, so that'll give us a little bit of speed. So now we want to start bouncing again. This slope, I think, is slightly steeper. So I have a little bit of speed now, so I'm going to preserve it. Through the end, and I should have plenty of gems. I do. This level's pretty generous. The real secret is how Kay's lore is Full Metal Alchemist. That is definitely a secret, because I certainly do not know that one. That is a secret to me.
Oh god, I can only imagine. <laughs> Wild. All right. Uh, so we're back to the level where I can randomly get hit if the tomato is in, like, the wrong spot in the wobble cycle. So let's try and hope that doesn't happen. I'll probably just go over him for safety. He's usually kind of consistent if your timing is good. Like, he, he, you'll, you'll catch him at the right part of the cycle. But I lost runs to that. This is a really missable bonus. So this one, you're supposed to bounce off the armored beats, but if you just hold B when you get in, you don't have to do any bouncing. Remember, once you bounce, you can't float anymore. So basically, you just want to hold B on the way in and just float through the whole thing instead of ever touching the beats, and like, you pretty much just never want to bounce in that bonus. I can miss four here. That is way more than four. Okay, that's fine. So those, those are my backups right there. If I miss four or less, I'm good. Oh, I don't have to even worry about this guy's wobble. Because we got, uh, he's gonna have to bust open the pot for us. You can't just, like, break pots on the ground. You have to break pots on enemies or, like, on bullets or something. You can do a... Eh, never mind. There's a little strat there. It's not important. I will tell you it's called the Jesus Jump, but it's not important. Um, okay, and a second bonus right under this guy. See, occasionally we use the ground pound to go down. Sometimes. How many levels are there? Great question. There are 31 normal levels and four bosses. I can catch a fast cycle here, but I'm pretty sure I missed it. So we're doing this one a little bit slower. Um, so, uh... Yeah, so 27, like, levels in any percent, four bonus levels and four bosses. And we're playing them all. We are playing them all. You're going to see all of them, even the wacky and wild bonus levels. All right. You can ground pound up into this portal, but it's slower than just floating up. Okay, don't forget to go back to the bonus level. So I've, I've forgotten to do that. I don't know why they didn't just put the bonus levels at the end. Maybe Tyrant knows. Why did they not just put the bonus levels at the end? <laughs> like, why do you have to go back to 2, 3 to play it, like, last? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird. All right, beats and bounces. I like this level. This is a cool. This is a cool bonus level. And I just get wrecked immediately. Okay, I still like it. All right, you know what? I'm not gonna hold that one against you, level. I'm not. I'm not mad. I forgive you for that. Let me just be a little bit careful with my gems. Uh, let me just be a little bit patient here. Oh my! Alright, we gotta do it again. Mmm, <clears throat> I think I can miss this. If I come out of this with 99 gems, I am gonna be a little bit tilted. Right, that's, how, that's how we do it. That's how we do it fast. So in the aisle, you can't actually see the red gems, so you just have to memorize where all the beats are. Oh no! Oh my god, 100, thank goodness! Oh. That was almost... Oh my god, thank goodness. <laughs> alright, 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 alright. Uh, I was, I was scared. Alright, on to... the boss. Yes, I see that in chat. GameFuex is the WR holder on console. He's a legend. All right, so this is Buck the Beat. Buck has no randomness. Um, what you have to do is you have to hit two of the little mini beats. Uh, that's the first one, just hit it off screen, and then he'll tumble in. And uh, you have to, his vulnerable spot is like on his forehead. Uh, the rest of him is like covered by, he's like protected. So you have to hit his forehead. He kind of, he, he chases you and tumbles around. That's sort of his attack. Hopefully we don't see it. 
So let me see if I can pull this off. So the second beat is coming in right here. I'm just going to blast it as soon as it gets on screen. I'm going to wait for him to be in a very specific position, fire a bullet. And I heard it, and we don't even see him. So that's the buck quick hits. You can hit him off screen. That saves about two seconds for each hit. Um, you can do it for all three phases. The first one is pretty consistent. I probably get it like 95%. I don't miss it very often. The third one is nearly guaranteed. I almost never miss it. The second one is tough. And only recently did I start getting consistent with it at all. So there's a chance that I might miss it here. Um, it's specific timing, specific positioning uh, to pull it off. And I just have a setup that works. So I just do it the way that I know. So here's the next beat. So I got to wait to get through the gap right here. If I heard it and we're good. Nice. If I miss that, I would lose at least two seconds. The third one should be consistent, so uh, you should be not seeing Buck at all. So three, we got three quick hits on Mona, three quick hits on Buck. Which is uh, pretty swag. Never heard somebody verbally say WR holder. How else should I identify myself? And Game Fuchs. All right, so the third one, you just do it when this guy gets kind of under you. Oh, whoa, we missed it. I never miss that. I swear I never miss that. I never miss that. That's never happened before. I haven't seen that phase in ages. That's the one that is consistent. <laughs> it, that's also the one that loses the most time if you miss it. Uh, so we lost a little bit of time there, but okay, you get to see Bob. These, All right. These things happen sometimes. <laughs> I think I've done that like a hundred times in a row. Like the last 100 attempts, I've never missed it. That has never happened before. <laughs> Game Fuchs doesn't miss it. He's a gamer. Um. All right. Uh, you see water, you know what that means. Oh, I need these gems. Okay. The gem routing, so this level gives you a lot of gems, but a lot of them are really out of the way. I need exactly those three. I have a pretty precise gem route. There are backups. Gotta come back for here. We got one shark super. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, come on. Do it, do it. Yeet, just like that. Gotta, gotta get the shark super. I need the last two gems here, and I can barely squeeze past. Barely squeeze past that. Okay. The pretty uh, straightforward bonus. Never happened before, emoji. Good idea. Okay, I want six of these. I don't want the ones up there. They're out of the way. I'm, I'm going to skip a lot of gems. So the ones that I'm taking are pretty precise. I want both of those. Grab this. Sneak past this dude. There's a lot of little hitbox sneaks in this level. Uh, right through here. There's also like a couple damage boosts. There's like three kind of viable damage boosts in this level and they all save almost the exact same amount of time. So I'm going to skip those three gems. I used to get them, but I just routed them out in place of another uh, set. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. <sighs> I will have exactly enough backups for this. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to back this up. You can sneak past these guys, too, but I'm going to back this up with this heart right here. Mm, yeah, I definitely want this heart. Okay. Uh, and then here's a bonus that nobody found. This bonus I call Combination Lock. This is a pretty annoying bonus if you don't have it memorized, if you know what you're doing. You just punch in the code. Just like that. And this bonus, for some reason, puts you way back. This one spawns you, like, way far behind where you were at. 
just so fish can spawn back in behind you. Okay. I think I'm, yeah, three. So I have three more gems that I need. And there's eight here, so I grab those three. Again, you gotta let them count up to 100. They gotta count up to 100. Okay, we're all good. Zipline, zipline. So I'm a big fan of this level. This level um, features the ziplines again. This is a really optimized IL. Um. Because it's quite, I don't know, like auto scrolly in a way. I just recently rerouted my gems here, so I'm gonna do drop down. I can miss that one. I'm gonna have to basically ditch my entire uh, boost there, just to get that um, uh, the buried treasure gems. I used to skip those, so that I could take like the speed boost from hitting the enemies instead of having to stop. But that would mean I had to get these instead. So instead, of, now I can just do that. And I used to have to get these three, but I don't need them anymore. Nice little secret bonus. Uh, there's a very nice unintended strat for this one. Supposed to do this like zigzag motion, but instead we can just sneak through the side just like that. Okay, and I don't need those three. Spin through that guy. That was like one of the first ever strats that I found was that spin through the um, the uh, tomato right there. Like one of my first ever strats. I think this level was my second ever record uh, and it got beat a couple times. This level was, this level record was taken from me a couple times. All right, so this is like the sinking sludge type of boss or uh, type of bonus. It's like the toxic tower outside a toxic tower. Toxic lake, I guess. Those guys are always in the same position when you come back up just because of like local cycles. And I have enough gems, so I'm all good. I should have three over, I think. I'll have a hundred. I think I'm gonna end the level with a hundred and um three. That hitbox barely misses you, which is really nice. And 104. One extra one extra gem. Yeah, the ground pound, I mentioned this during the tutorial, the ground pound is an incredibly flexible move. I'm using it quite a lot. It's really good for climbing. It'll bring you up to hooks. It'll bring you up to vertical ropes. Um, you can use it to grab the gems. You can use it to get to level exits. It's a really useful, flexible move. And using it to go up is like 90% like of its functionality. Um, and here we go again. Ground pound to go up. We need those gems right there. All right, we're gonna do a coyote jump out of this. Hold on, one more try. So in, in that, you gotta actually get out of the spin and then um, coyote jump and that little move right there where we get the gems, bounce off the onion and get up to the top. It's a pretty tough move. You can cheese this bonus by climbing up the, um, like the cannons, but actually just bouncing on the bananas is faster. And again, you don't need the last bounce. You can just ground pound to get up. Um, I don't need too many of these gems, so I can just be a little bit careless with them. All right, we've got another another ground pound coming up uh, right here. Just climb up onto that uh, banana bill. Use them to go down sometimes too. That one's used just to get me back on the ground so I can spin. All right, I'm pretty sure I have enough red gems here. I should be fine. It's gonna be a tragedy if I don't. All 
Yeah, the ground pound's super flexible. Definitely can use it a lot. Let's just be a little safe and grab. I'm gonna grab more than that, but... Uh, no, I have enough. I'm fine, I'm fine. A little bit worried about my gem count. We got a 10 stack right there. Okay, one more. We're gonna do another sort of coyote spin here. You might think that saves a good amount of time over taking the right platform. You know how much time it saves over using the right platform? It's like less than a second. It's surprisingly minimal. That level is totally like Super Mario Bros. level. The sinking and rising platforms and the banana bills. All right, we got our, uh, we got another, um, so, uh, we, our backup gems are right there. Those are our backup gems. We're skipping them. Um, we got another tiger level, and this is a tiger slingshot level. Now, this is a really interesting level, but for some reason, this level seems to be really good about, like, eating inputs. I don't know why, but for some reason, I feel like this level just consistently drops my inputs. Be I, think, I think it's more when I'm doing aisles, oh, than when I'm doing full game runs, but for some reason, yeah, this level just has input problems, and I don't know why. Alright, so this bonus we're going to shoot seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, two, one, and two. One, two, three, four. And then wait, and then wait, and then wait, and then shoot. Boom. It's really kind of amazing. It gives you a lot of time in that one to figure it out. All the bonuses are like kind of first tryable in this game. Uh, this one we cheese a little bit. We just float over here, grab the Z. And we're out of there. I need all but two of these gems in the vertical section. That's exactly what I want. Second bonus is a little bit hidden. There's an out-of-bounds glitch. After you come out of this bonus, you can actually climb up and get, like, over the um, trigger for the tornado and have it not spawn. Now, the intended route here is to just zigzag downwards, but I like to do this bottom row first. It is very slightly faster. And because I'm on route with my gems, um, I don't need those ones on the left. And I have exactly 100. <laughs> if it's hungry, eat a sandwich, not my input. Yes. Cheers to you. I love it. All right, let's get let's get our revenge on Ground Pound Town. Come on. There's going to be a lot of Ground Pounds in this one because the route's a little bit different. I think it's I think it's actually more than 19. We'll see. So we gotta go a little bit out of the way to get stuff. Yeah, you wanna see the value of the ground pound? You're about to see it. Use one right there. Pass through those guys. You don't really need to kill those guys. All right, let's try and swag out and not take the checkpoint. One time. If I die, I'll take the checkpoint. But for now, let's try and swag out. There's only, I think, four checkpoints in the game that are, like, skippable. I do not want that guy killing me. I think it's four. Most of the checkpoints are just not skippable. But there's a few that are. Some of them, how to skip them is a little bit convoluted. All right, second bonus. Yeah, I need a name for this bonus too. I don't know what I want to call this one. 
the hook maze, the onion rings. I'm, on, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I th last time I was on Hotfix playing this game, I think I was with um, Midnight Vesper. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, are they onion rings? I was like, that is genius. We're going to call them that from now on. They're onion rings. Shout outs to Midnight Vesper. Um, all right. And now we're just going to bounce along these guys as intended. I'm going to go real slow here. Look before I leap. Okay, one more ground pound and we're out of there. Go for the rope glitch. I already showed it off. <laughs> I did show off the rope glitch in 4-1. Game Fuchs, did you lose a run to that? I, I feel like you're always you're always stressing about that. I think you have a chip on your shoulder against that glitch. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this level is unbelievably generous with gems. It has the most gems of any level in the game. There's 105 gems and 4 hearts, so you can get up to 125. So I can be really sloppy with the gems here. Sneak in a quick little spin just to hit that first guy. Nice little aggressive strat we have there. Um, my gold split is 7 seconds faster on this level because I did the end part not entirely blind, but semi-blind, and I took the damage boost. So my PB has time to save on this level. Go under that guy. If you try and spin that guy, you'll get hit. The spin, I didn't talk about this, but the spin's um, hitbox is actually only like the lower part, like the lower middle part of her body. The upper part, when she's spinning, it's still vulnerable. So if, if an enemy lands like on top of you, you'll get hit. Interesting. Yeah, and your feet, the other funny thing is that your feet are actually still a stomp hitbox. So if you try and spin onto something and you sort of land on it from above, you won't spin through it, you'll stomp it. Which is usually not what you want. Stomping is generally slow. Okay. So we don't do this part blind. Uh, we're gonna need the second uh, bonus right here. Do a few ground pounds here. You did get that glitch on 100%. That's brutal. So ground pound's really helpful just for climbing from the bottom row up to the top row here. I forgot something at the beginning. Bruh. Bruh. What are you on about? I didn't forget nothing. Yeah, Kays is great. There are lots of runs on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at death control. Um, SRC's got plenty of good stuff on there too. I got all the ILs on there. Um, all the full game runs. A lot of good stuff on there. And I, I stream this game sometimes. I've been streaming it lately because I've been de-rusting it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just go for the damage boost here, so. And you can see I already have 100 gems. See, I didn't miss nothing. Ooh, when we get right in front of that bullet right there. So, um, in damage list, I wouldn't do that, but it does save, like, a second. Maybe, maybe, actually, maybe, like, two or three seconds. And here, I'm not going to do this part entirely blind. I'm going to go for the end blind one time. We're doing this one shot. Just the end part. Nope. Oh. I accidentally dropped my finger, literally slipped off of the jump. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> a little bit more auto scroller for you. I hope you enjoy this level. I'm just gonna do it uh, careful next time. Forgot to give Kays a head pat. Pat, 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 pat. Pat, 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 pat. Pat, 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 pat. Almost got it. My finger straight up slipped off the button. That was that was tragic. All right, um, I can I can actually still damage boost here. I I have tons of gems. I don't need them. All right, all right. We just do this part. Uh, we just do this part. Careful. Nice and patient with the camera.
And under those guys, go ahead and just wait for this. Okay. <laughs> that level was straight up mom's spaghetti. No joke. Okay. All right. If you like auto scrollers, don't worry. I got another one for you. This one is pretty hard. This one does not give you that many gems and it doesn't give you that much speed. The first level, there's like slopes everywhere. This level literally gives you like two down slopes. So you get a down slope at the beginning. You need to carry that speed all the way to the midpoint. And then you get one more and you got to carry that speed to the end. Um, I do actually have to slow down for a collectible, so I won't be going full speed through the whole level. Um, we want to do a little tiny jump there and grab that gem without going up on the platform. Okay, so here's our first slope. And I have to go full speed while collecting as many of the gems as possible. So there's another fish that spawns um, at the midpoint. And in any percent, there's a damage boost at the midpoint. And if you take that damage boost, the first fish will go away and then come back when the second one spawns. And you'll get chased by two fish. It's actually not that hard to activate. The only thing is I'm not doing the damage boost in this run, so you're not going to see it. But there's the second fish. So in any percent, there'd be two fish chasing me right here. You can also go, um, and this is where I need to slow down. You can also get um, so much speed in this level that you can literally collect all of the red um, fruits and none of the white fruits, and he still can't catch you. This level, for anyone familiar with Donkey Kong, this is like basically Haunted Hall. So the red ones make him speed up and then the white ones make him go away. But if you have speed, like collecting the fruits literally just doesn't matter. He just won't be able to catch up. Okay, we're all good on this level. Last bonus is very sneaky here behind the exit. Damage boost universal in older or older style games. I can't really say. Um, some some games, I suppose they are. Another game I'm really big on, if you are uh, interested in it, want to check out some of my content. Another game I spend a ton of time on is Donkey Kong Country or the Game Boy Color. Not the regular Super Nintendo games. I play the Game Boy Color one. You might think that that's a joke, but no, I take that game very seriously. Um, I made a task for it. I've done a lot of runs. Um, it's a wonderful game. But anyways, in that game, there's like only one single intended damage boost. Or like one, one place where I try to take a damage boost. So I'm not sure if I would say damage boosts are universal. But they are a pretty big deal in this game. Um, just not in 100%. So in any percent, there's lots of them. I overjumped the last bonus, me too. Uh, Donkey Kong Country. But the thing is, I also played Donkey Kong Land on the classic Game Boy. Um, I have the record in both of those games. Donkey Kong Country on the GBC and Donkey Kong Land 1, not the other two. Just the first one. Donkey Kong Land is a completely different story. In that game, you also don't want to take any damage. Anyways, I didn't get to introduce this level. This is Free Fall, so this is the only downwards level in the game. This level is a weird anomaly. There are no hearts in this level, and there are 107 red gems. And I actually need to reset because I need that gem. I was not supposed to miss that. I need oh, that no. 10 stack that I missed. Um, it's a short level, don't worry, we're not losing too much time over it. But um, this is a funky level. I, I like this level, it's cool. This level is also incredibly optimized. I have world record on this level by 0 0.02 seconds, like literally one frame. All right, there it is. And that is the narrowest margin. There's even an auto scroller later that I have a wider margin on. No, actually, I have the same margin. Um, but this level is just like crazy optimized. Shout outs to Kavalka for his insane second place time.
Net Surrogates have damage boosts like Mega Man. Yeah, exactly. It just depends on the game. Some some games damage boosts are a big deal. Some games are not. This one, I think damage boosts are really built in intentionally, which I think is really cool. It, the, the best thing about damage boosts in this game is that if you're taking intentional damage boosts, it means you can't mess up elsewhere in the level. So it really just raises the skill. It really puts you on hard mode because it means you cannot take damage anywhere else or you're dying. So I, I think it's pretty cool. Anyways, this is the third boss. This is Olaf. I think you can figure out what vegetable he is. Uh, now, uh, this is mostly just pattern memorization. Nice thing with Olaf is there's no quick hits, because even if you hit him early, he takes the same amount of time to go into the wall. So this boss is a straight-up auto-scroller. There's really nothing you can do to gain or lose time on it. Um, except just getting the last hit kind of quickly. I really want to try to preserve my heart here because I'm gonna um, uh, want it for four one. Even in any percent, I really don't want to take damage on this boss. <laughs> Tiger can like spam dash and jump on walls, so you can like uh, turbocharge the wall. Let me let me see in a second here. This phase. All right. Last hit here. That's a loss for you. <laughs> I honestly find the boss kind of easy. I'm not really scared of him. Funky Kong level. <laughs> Why does the character have no pants? Diddy has no pants. I feel like there are a lot of, like, characters in this kind of style and cartoon characters who have shirts and no pants. I feel like it's just the, it, the style at this point. Yeah, come on, Donkey Kong doesn't even have a shirt. He only has a tie. It's true. That's normal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go for... I want to go for this little uh, sneak up to here. Just for the letter, so we're gonna skip the trigger there. It doesn't actually matter, but I just need the letter. No damage boost, so we go around to the side here. You can beat that bullet, but I'm just being a little safe. And we're not doing any out of bounds shenanigans because there's a bonus right here I have to go to. I missed this one. This is the Bird Batty Bonanza. That's the name of this bonus. And you can stomp and shoot the enemies. They give you more than you need. Okay, so again, this is another level where the, it gives you a lot of gems, but many of the gems are out of the way. So the gem routing is tight because I want to really skip all of the gems that force you to go out of the way. I can miss this one right here. That's totally fine. I totally went for these uh, sneak strats and damage lists. I was not afraid. There's gems up and to the right. There's five gems there, but I don't want them because they're just way out of the way. There's gems right below me to the left, but I don't want them. They're out of the way. Got to come up here to get the letter. All right, there's gems to the right. I don't want them. There's a little trove over here, hidden heart. I do want to get these. Now I can 
beat that. Okay. I should have exactly enough. I think I can actually still miss like one or two more. Be okay, I'm just gonna wait on this cycle here, be a little patient. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm good, because there's a couple stragglers and there's another 10 stack. There's a single, there's a 10 stack up above. So we're good on gems. Okay, there is a very fast cycle in this bonus. Let's see if I can pull it off. It's not here yet. The one on the right. So this, I want to get it before he gets me. Okay, that's the fast cycle. And then I can grab that, and we're out of there. All right, just wait for those to pass. I don't need these anymore. One more little sneak that's slightly faster. Long shot that one right there. Get the glitter. And we're out of there. All right, gamers, we're coming into the final stretch here. This is the last world. The The levels are getting pretty hard. So the last world is really like kind of a gauntlet. There's one of each mask. So uh, every mask appears one more time. And the levels which are not mask levels are challenging. So uh, I've already shown off this level. We'll get to see the 100% route here, get to see the bonuses. I don't actually need all those gems, but I'll grab them anyway. Shoutouts to the music in this game, by the way, if anyone's been, if you've been able to hear it over my blabbering. Love the soundtrack for this game. Yeah, the, the checkpoints get further away, exactly. Uh, this bonus is Flappy Bird. And you will always end this bonus as long as you hold right and shoot three times, you will have a seven on the timer. You always hit it right as it turns seven. This level you reset so much. Yeah, it's a hard level. I took some nasty damage on this level. So we're gonna drop down just to this bottom row here. Those gems are the backups. And we are on target with gems. We don't need them. We don't get to do the cool new strat here because I need the letter. So we do a little zigzag. Little ghost spin there. Okay. All right, good. So we got another bonus with um, beats and upwind. <laughs> Very perfect bonus. <laughs> yep, pretty much. So if I just hold float, I don't bounce on the beat, and now I get to float through the level. Because again, if I bounce, then uh, there's no, um, I can't I can't float out of bounce. There's a really funny glitch with the float, just like this. Okay, I'm not making that. Um, there's a weird glitch with the floating that where if you release and quickly repress your float while you're in the upwind, uh, she'll go into that sort of like uh, she'll sort of t pose. It happens in two eight a lot. <laughs> And you get to the end of the level, you think you're short on gems, but there's a 10 stack right behind the end, so you're good to go. I've only had to reset three, uh, the, the bonus of uh, free fall, I think was the only level I had to reset for missing gems. Otherwise I haven't had to reset any level for missing gems, which is pretty good so far. I believe that's accurate, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the only one I had to reset on, on gems. So this level is called, um, I call it Bouncy Bonanza. And that slope at the beginning that lands you onto the um, jelly, 
gives you slope curse and you will have the slope curse throughout the like entire level because you're just bouncing the whole time which means like the one spot where you land on the ground um you have to remember that you got slope curse and you can't buffer your spin that is very annoying in like il runs you just randomly get your spin eaten and then you don't know why because you will just traverse this entire level with the slope curse i just remembered i need those gems let's not forget those okay And the second bonus is super hidden. You like hide them behind the foreground. They're like so hard to find. You forgot about the bonus exactly. Nice, that was fast. Both of these bonuses give you weird cycles out of the bonus on uh, the hundred or on the fresh file route. So if you're coming out of the bonus on a file you've already played you get a different cycle, and it's a nicer cycle than on Fresh File. Okay, I, I got plenty of gems. I'm all good on gems right now. The IL in this level is kind of an auto-scroller because there's no um, spinning, so there's not many places to save time. It's, it's one of those ILs where, like, again, every frame counts. All right, we'll grab that. And the intended damage boost in this level is right at the end. We're not going to take it, but that one you instant fire. And if you take, if you have your heart, you would instant fire that one. We're not going to take it though. I'm going to save the damage boost. All right, so we got the last lizard level coming up. So we talked about the lizard mechanics. This level is interesting because it doesn't give you any slopes. There's one tiny slope in the middle of the level, and that's it. So because there's no slopes, there's no speed, so there's no reason to bunny hop. We can, we don't have to bounce around, we can just kind of run through the level. Um, you can get a little speed boost in the middle of the level, and you can carry that speed boost quite far. And it's led to a kind of crazy IL. Um, but unfortunately, you have to reset a lot for it. So this bonus is called the 9420. Let me show you why. Nine, four, two, oh. Makes sense, makes sense. That is the 9420. That's actually a really clever way to just memorize the pattern. Yeah, I just memorized the numbers. I just remember, okay, you go right, middle, right, middle. Second bonus kind of hiding down there. Easy one to miss. And this is the only bonus that doesn't require you to get all of the green gems. I'm not sure if you can get them all. I think you can get all of them, but like two. I'd be impressed to see somebody get like the max number. <gasps> oh! All right, this is why you gotta memorize the bonus. I think that's actually my first bonus fail. I don't think I failed any other bonuses. All right, that didn't lose too much time. Not a big deal. I jump from the edge. So here you can't get them all. I think on that one you have to miss two. The others, I think you can get them all. But it gives you a very generous amount. Okay, and we're back. This one, you can just walk off. The spikes won't even hit you. And uh, yeah, we have a bit of an auto scroller. So there's going to be a downslope coming up. And what's really annoying is the downslope is literally right before the checkpoint. So if you want to practice playing the level with the speed boost, once you get the speed, then you get the checkpoint. If you die, you don't get the speed again. So you have to start the level over. I'm going to go for this one time. This level is called Zip Lizard. This strat, I call this Quick Lizard. It kind of desyncs the banana bills. So the banana bills come at you at like a different speed. 
And that's why it's really risky. I need that 10 stack of gems right there. Now I don't get the now I don't get the boost. So this one's really annoying to practice. Um, it's a risky strat. I actually did not go for it in my PB, but it's the type of thing I go for in any percent. And the reason why, this is why the level is at like a constant speed, because um, the banana bills are going at a constant speed and like their position depends on your speed. So normally you're supposed to get five bounces there, but if you're going faster, they're moving slower and you only get three bounces and it's hard to pull off. This one actually will not catch up to you and you won't even be able to hit that one. So that you have to slow down a little bit before that point, but you can do this section with some of the speed boost still, and you can take continue taking the speed boost all the way to like right about here. Here you have to slow down. So that's kind of why this level is at a constant speed because of um, it has to line up with the banana bills. And we got, uh, I think I got all the gems. Minus five that I should have got, but I took damage. Uh, all right, so we got, uh, again, we're just doing the um, gauntlet of mask levels. So uh, Haunted Lake, this is going to be our last uh, shark level. This is a really interesting level. This level, so a, a lot of things, I, I have praised the level design in this game many times. One thing that I love is that the built um, a lot of sections where you can just kind of like go full speed through the section and things will just line up for you. In this level, I think they purposely put things in a position where you have to slow down. Um... Like, it's just like the distance from one enemy to the next. You need to actually wait and not do your spin, your, do your, like your dash instantly, or else you'll um, crash into uh, that enemy. Okay. I lost a little time there, but it's fine. I have to wait anyways. Oh, yeah, Game Fuchs, you got wrecked on this stage. <laughs> There's the last letter, the E, is uh, hiding. In a very secret location. If you forget about that one, you can be in big trouble. Alright, barely are able to hit those guys. Both the bonuses are kind of early in this level. This bonus has an easy name. This is called the smiley face bonus. See if you can figure out why. The smiley face bonus includes a lot of loop de loops. Here you got a duck under. Oh! I just straight up got jump scared by that. <laughs> <laughs> got me off guard. I was going too fast. All right. Uh, loop de loops, smiley face. Get some smiley faces in the chat. Uh, do a little backwards loop on that one. Up more loops. Up and over. Down and up. Ah! All right, come, on. come on, guys. Smiley faces. Let's go. Smiley faces in the chat. Normally slow down there a little bit. You've got okay. this. There it is. All right, there it is. Woo! Let's go. Uh, I missed a gem, but I think I have I have 101, so I can miss one gem in this level. That's my miss. All right, Fishy's back. All right, there's a route here that looks risky. It's more consistent than it looks. I've got backups up top, but I don't think I need them. I should be able to end this level with exactly 100. Uh, right in this location, right here, there's a heart that only spawns in casual mode. It is the only one in the game that depends on what mode you're in. I don't know why it does it, but there's a heart only in casual mode in this level. In, in original mode, there's no heart. 
Here's our last letter and exactly 100 gems. Oh yeah, this song slaps. I love this song, by the way. Cat Jammers. What up, Butter? Welcome in, good to see you. This game was made in Brazil, you got it. All right, back to Circuit Capers. So fortunately, no Sheldon skip. Thank goodness, I hate that strat. <laughs> Shout outs to the person who put Sanic when I said to spam smiley faces. <laughs> Shout outs to you. <laughs> so that beat, if you try and spin through that beat, that's what'll happen. You'll actually just bounce off of him. You'll hit him with the hitbox on your feet. It's kind of weird. So that's why I don't try and spin through him. Nope. One of the bonuses in this level is uh, actually kind of hard to find. This one, I swear everybody misses this on your first playthrough. Come on, let me know in chat. I know you all missed this one. Nobody found that one. This one has a pretty tight cycle you can make. And nice. If you're fast enough, you can catch that. Ground pound up into the gem. Whew. This one gives you a really weird spawn cycle. I usually just like slow down a little bit here. Because the, the cycle coming in is kind of odd. All right, so these gems down below are the backups. I don't need those ones. I'll collect these six. And I should have plenty. I need 67 going into the auto scrolling section. This is why we don't have to do Sheldon skip because I need these collectibles here. Oh, I'll just take that one patient and I've got plenty of gems. So I'm gonna end the level with 103. So I've got to collect this 10 stack before going into the bonus. You might think when you come out of the bonus, why not collect the 10 stack while you're waiting for the auto scroller to start? And the problem is that that the green gem collection thing takes just long enough that it's really hard to catch that platform. So you think I could just collect the gems now while I'm waiting on the auto scroller, but because of like the um, spawning in feature, I barely make that cycle. So for safety, I just collect those gems before going into the bonus. And there we go, 103. And we're out of there. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm the only person who's really heavily optimized uh, this category. The any percent categories are a good bit more optimized by the other runners, but um, the 100% category I'm the only person who's like heavily optimized it. So there's an interesting strat here. The bonus is on my left. I'm gonna skip it. In 100% damage list, I neglected to do this strat. I went for the bonus. In the spirit of damage list, I considered like re-entering a level, resetting levels. I figured that's, I'm not gonna do that in the spirit of damage list. This strat, skipping the bonus now, saves a small amount of time. I think it's about, four seconds or so. It's not much. It saves a little bit of time. What's going to happen? We'll get the second bonus here. And after finishing the level, we're going to restart the level, go back and get that first bonus. And after getting the first bonus, we can exit the level. So the um, gems and K's letters are not persistent if you exit the level, but the green gem bonuses are persistent. I have to wait a cycle here again because of the green gem spawn in thing. I have to wait for that guy. Um, okay, I'm gonna... Normally, I would do this a little bit more aggressive. I'm just gonna be patient here. Definitely do that part faster.
So yeah, so in, in theory, the strat could save about five seconds or so to um, just skip the first bonus and then you come back and get it. Uh, because you don't have to wait on, there's a couple things you don't have to wait for. You don't have to wait for it counting up on the end screen. You don't have to wait for the gem to tally up on the end screen and you don't have to wait for the um, re-entry sequence into the level. That's what the, what the time save is. So let me grab uh, the last letter there, do a nice little uh, coyote spin jump. All right. So we're gonna re-enter the level. We're gonna grab the last gem. And then when I exit this level, when you get all the green gems, there's a little cutscene. I always forget to skip this cutscene. So I have to remember to skip this cutscene when I come out of here. All right, pick up that, and then we get to skip this, return to map, skip the cutscene, and we've got the final level. We're almost at the end. This is the last bonus level. This is Bullet Vader. I am going to just be quiet and let you enjoy the glory of Bullet Vader. This level is a show. Enjoy. And pow, damage. Bolt invader. So, um, I had a run get, when I was working on 100% damage list challenge, I had a run die here that was like 50 seconds ahead of record. And I threw it away. Oh, it, no. did, it wouldn't have lost time. It would have been a world record, but I threw it away. Bullet Vader is essentially like, uh, if any of you are familiar with uh, Celeste Farewell in the Golden Room, that is what Bullet Vader is. It is the Golden Room. And I am no stranger to dying in the Golden Room. And this is the final boss. So the final boss is known as a uh, Typhoon. There's a whole lore thing about why she's uh, evil and stuff. Uh, if you want to know about it by the game. Uh, there's callbacks to each of the masks and some platforming sections. There's some really interesting time saves actually in this level. This one has some sort of quick hit strats to it as well. What we do is we pick up the, um, uh, we just pick up the gems. Uh, once you get six of them, she becomes vulnerable. And you can kind of control her AI. So we want to rush ahead here. Rush ahead through the laser. Grab that gem right before the laser fires. And that makes her go vulnerable a little bit faster rather than waiting on that laser. Now this part looks really scary. It's not as tight as it looks. Yeah, the shark part is the hardest part in my opinion. I feel like the difficulty curve is just like a spike. The shark is the hardest part. After that, I feel like it gets a bit easier. This part, you just zigzag, and she's pretty much always out of your way. There's another quick hit on this section, too. So I'm going to rush ahead of the laser, and again, just grab that, um, grab the last gem. Uh, we're almost done here. We're coming up on time. So time, uh, we're going to use console timing rules again. Timing's going to happen when I get the score the final hit on her. 
So get ready on time. Looks like we're in 135 territory. I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty good. Uh, so you can kind of skip ahead uh, by just kind of going under this wall. You're like supposed to climb over it, but you still have to wait for her to come up. So while we wait here, we just do a bit of uh, tiger wall spamming. All right, get ready. Time is coming up. Time. It's looking like probably a 135.40. Awesome. I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with that. And uh, so we got an underestimate. So I'll show you the uh, ending cutscene. Everything goes back to normal. The vegetables return. 135.35. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's Caves in the Wild Masks, or Kaze in the Wild Masks. It's a really fun game. Um, casually, it's a great game. It's it's really chill. It's a really mellow game. I promise you, like I said, I play Celeste. Listen up, gamers. This game is not Celeste, okay? This game is not that hard. It's a mellow game. If you're not really too into platformers, there's casual mode for you. Um, really support the developers. This game isn't that popular, so, like, just buy the game. Throw them some money. They deserve it. It's 20 bucks. It goes on sale pretty frequently. It's available on all platforms. Um, I suppose uh, I just want to give a couple shout outs. And uh, that's that's probably mostly it. I'm not showing you true ending. You can't see that. <laughs> oh, that's true ending. You can't see the true ending. You got to buy the game if you want to see true ending. I'll show you the credits. Um... But yeah, I'll, I'll just give a couple shout outs, I think. Um, shout outs to the developers, Pixel Hive, if y'all are watching, love you. Be really awesome if you'd fix some of those glitches. <laughs> That'd be so great. <laughs> um, it's a really amazing game. Um, shout outs to Sodesco, the publishers, for y'all. Uh, it'd be really awesome if y'all could make the um, limited edition DLC available to everybody, even if it's paid. I think it's... Uh, so tragic when limited edition DLC exists because new players get into the game and just like see it and they can't have it. Kind of a bummer. Um, that'd be great if y'all are around uh, for that. And as for players, there's a lot of really amazing runners who played this game. A lot of people aren't really super active on this game anymore. But just shout outs to the people who helped make this run what it is. Shout outs to Kavalka. Shout outs to Sheldon's Pet Rock. Oreo. Game Fuchs, uh, Marion Lastico. I'm sure I pronounced your name wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, shout outs to Anancos. Uh, shout outs to Azur Samurai. I've been seeing that name moving up the leaderboard, so apparently there is someone else running it. I'm going to show <laughs> this actually. Um, so apparently, I've been. That name. Uh, yeah. Uh, it sounds like we lost uh, Death Control here, so um, I do want to give a huge shout out to Death Control. Thank you so much for being on the show. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, sorry to just kind of catch you off like this, but uh, looks like your internet dropped. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, we do have another show uh, coming up right afterwards. It is Speed Runs from the Crypt. Uh, so stick around for that. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you're interested in the game, go check it out.